You're looking down on one of the great sports arenas in the world, the Coliseum in Los Angeles, California, and it's the setting for another great college football game this afternoon, which you're about to see live and in color on ABC. The 43rd meeting between the USC Trojans and the UCLA Bruins. This massive population center almost still today as this football game gets ready to begin. For this is a game that has captivated the attention of this entire section of the country, the entirety of the West and much of the nation. The series record, USC, has won 23. UCLA has won 13. There have been six ties. And this is one of the great all-time inner-city rivalries in the world of sports. There have been many great football games played in the series. Let's go back to 1965, when Mel Farr was an All-American at UCLA and played like one in this game. Seen running 49 yards here for UCLA's first touchdown in the 65 game. And Heisman Trophy winner Mike Garrett also lived up to his brilliance, despite the fact there were two Bruins aimed at him all day and helped put the Trojans into a 16-6 lead. But with four minutes to play in that ball game, the Bruins caught fire. And sophomore quarterback Gary Beaven passed to Kurt Altenberg for 48 yards and the touchdown that won for the Bruins 20-16. to 16. That was in 1965. In 1967, the greatest college football game I've ever seen. O.J. Simpson, number 32, leading USC to a 21-20 victory. But Gary Beaven of UCLA won the Heisman Trophy that year. O.J. got his in 1968. 1969 was another memorable game with less than two minutes to play USC. Fourth down and ten yards to go. Jimmy Jones threw for wide receiver Sam Dickerson. The pass was wild, but interference was called against UCLA. And the Trojans stayed alive, trailing UCLA 12-7. Then from the 32-yard line, Jones threw for Sam Dickerson again in the corner of the end zone. And it worked again. And USC won the ball game 14-12. Whatever happens in 1973, you'll see next on ABC. Ah! NCAA football 1973, another ABC sports exclusive. Today from the Coliseum in Los Angeles, the Bruins of UCLA against the Trojans of USC. Ah! ABC Sports Exclusive is brought to you by Chevrolet, building a better way to see the USA. By Goodyear, makers of the custom steel guard radial tire. And by Weyerhaeuser, the tree going company for lumber, plywood, paper packaging, and thousands of other products from wood. of UCLA. Here come the Trojans of the University of Southern California, right behind them, roaring down the tunnel and into the massive Coliseum, where more than 90,000 people will be watching in person this afternoon. We welcome you to ABC's coverage of this great one. of certain individuals in this ball game. The national champion has been at stake before, and who knows, it could be again. But always, the city championship of Los Angeles is on the line, and that alone is enough to stir both teams and their followers into a virtual frenzy. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Keith Jackson. I'll be calling to play for you this afternoon, and this is the dessert of our Thanksgiving holiday feast of college football here on ABC. The USC Trojans come into the ball game with a loss and a tie. The UCLA Bruins have lost only one time, that in their opener against Nebraska, and since that time they've rolled along to nine consecutive wins. 
It has to be another great USC-UCLA football game. And a gentleman who grew up in this community and is very much aware of the temper that goes with this contest is Lee Grosskup, our analyst and commentator. And Cupper, I think the temper is very right for another great one. I don't know about you, partner, but I'm pretty pumped up for this one. I'll tell you, it's a great rivalry. It's all out there. The Victory Bell, the Pac-8, the Rose Bowl, and as you mentioned, individually, some great rivalries and some great matchups. Kermit Johnson for UCLA, the most prolific ground gainer in the Bruins history, will be going up against Lynn Swan, who is one of the great athletes uh, that the Trojans have, maybe one of the great athletes in the country. And uh, UCLA has that explosive wishbone attack, but they also have a front five, which is maybe the quickest that they have ever had. They average 260 pounds across the front. And that means that USC linebackers are going to have to be very effective today. And they have a couple of great ones in Richard Wood and James Sims. And, of course, uh, when you talk about USC, as we mentioned earlier, you have to mention Anthony Davis. Now, he hasn't had the year that he had last year, but he's a great explosive tailback. And, of course, you have the matchup of the two quarterbacks in Mark Harmon, number seven, who'll be going against Pat Hayden, number 10. And those two uh, are very good, very capable. Mark Harmon, particularly as a runner and ball handler. Pat Hayden has the fast trigger, and John McKay says he is about as good as any quarterback that he has ever had. So this is one of those games that has everything. All right. Now, let me uh, just take a half a moment here to tell you that Ohio State and Michigan play to a 10-10 tie. The Big Ten will vote tomorrow on which of those teams will represent the Big Ten Conference in the Rose Bowl. If we should have a tie in this ball game this afternoon, the UCLA Bruins would go to the Rose Bowl because they would have a better overall record than would the USC Trojans. And now, ladies and gentlemen... The starting lineups for this 43rd meeting between USC and UCLA. Introducing first, the UCLA Bruins. At left end from Anaheim, California, number 89, Norm Anderson. At left tackle from Fresno, California, number 76, Ed Kazarian. At left guard from Riverside, California, number 64, Gene Clark. At center, from Tarzana, California, number 51, Randy Cross. At right guard, from Laguna Beach, California, number 62, Steve Klusterman. At right tackle, from Artesia, number 70, Al Oliver. The tight end, from Gardena, number 87, Charles Burks. At quarterback, from Los Angeles, number 7, Mark Harmon. Running back from Houston, Texas, number 24, Russell Charles. So right. Running back from Los Angeles, number 37, Kermit Johnson. Oh, okay. Pullback from Pasadena, number 32, James McAllister. <laughs> and offensive guard from Palo Alto, number 61, Art Kuhn. <laughs> the football coach of the UCLA Bruins, Pepper Rogers. <laughs> okay, get ready, get ready, gang. Get ready. And now the starting lineup for the University of Southern California Trojans. Linebacker from Fresno, California, number 55, Charles Anthony. Punter from Downey, California, number 7, Dave Fulware. Tackle from Santa Barbara, California, number 63, Booker Brown. Nose guard from Fresno, California, number 72, Monty Doris. Tight end, Pomona, California, number 86, Dean Lingenfelter. Tailback from Baldwin Park, number 27, Rod McNeil. Fullback from San Fernando, number 44, Manfred Moore. Safety from Sacramento, number 14, Artemis Parker. Here we go, yeah. Linebacker from Los Angeles, number 52, Ray Rodriguez. Tackle from San Diego, number 78, Steve Riley. Linebacker from Los Angeles, number 41, James Sims. Flanker from Foster City, California, number 22, Lynn Swan. And the football coach of the USC Trojans, John McKay. Those are the starting lineups. Introducing the seniors for the USC Trojans. They'll be wearing the cardinal and gold. 
The UCLA Bruins will be in the blue and gold, and you're about to see another great one on ABC, known around the world as the leader in sports television. Now comes Miller time. The flag is dropped, the race is a memory. And now you're coasting into the best tasting beer you can find. Miller High Life, America's quality beer since 1855. If you got the time, if you got the time, you got the beer, you got the time. Not all radial tires are the same. Some have smooth riding polyester cord, some have steel belts. Some have steel stabilizers for handling. Some have a computerized tread to hold in the wet. Some have special grooves for precise cornering. But only Goodyear has them all. The Goodyear Steel Guard Radial. With these five guards to help protect you five ways. Steel Guard, only from Goodyear. The team captains have met in the center of the field with the officials for the flip of the coin. UCLA Bruins are going to show us their wishbone offense early because they won the toss and they will receive. And the gentlemen wearing the striped shirts down on the field who have a very difficult job in front of them this afternoon in this massive structure containing more than 90,000 people. The referee is Charles Muffet. The umpire is Jim Lineberger. The headlinesman, William Settle. The line judge, Johnny Jones. The back judge, Marv Tomovic. And the field judge is William Fetty. And the UCLA record at 9-1. and one. The Bruins lost the first one. But since that time, they have ruled mightily. Only Washington State and Michigan State were able to keep the score down. And Oregon, Oregon holding the Bruins to 27 points in a very wet ball game up north from Los Angeles. The USC Trojans, on the other hand, with an 8-1-1 one one record, they tied the great Oklahoma team here in the Coliseum, and they lost a tough ball game to the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame at South Bend. The USC Trojans are rated in the general consensus of opinion in the moments before this ball game as an underdog. They haven't been in that posture very many times in recent years. And as they kick it off, it'll be Anthony Davis, the brilliant tailback, kicking it away. The deep man for the UCLA Bruins is number 37, Kermit Johnson. They would like him to get the football. Eddie Ayers is back there with him. Here is the kickoff by Anthony Davis. He lifts it high and short, and it goes to Johnson at the 12-yard line. He's missed by one. He's pinned and dropped at the 27-yard line, where the UCLA Bruins will have the football, brought down by Tom Bollinger. So now let's set the UCLA Bruins offensively for you. Up along the front, it'll be Kazarian, 76, Clark, 64. Clark's a 279-pound tackle and guard. Number 51, Cross, number 62, Klosterman, number 70, Oliver, and the tight end is Raymond Burks. The quarterback is seven, Harmon. The left half back is 24, Charles. The full back is James McAllister, 32. And Kermit Johnson is number 37. Here's the wishbone, the first man in the wishbone gets the ball. Kermit Johnson going to the right. James McAllister, the full back, going to the left. And McAllister is nailed right at the line of scrimmage. And he is hit first by Dale Mitchell, number 85, Richard Wood, 83, James Sims, number 41. Those are the three linebackers. And Charles Anthony, 55. Those are the fellows who are really going to have to do a super job today to contain these UCLA Bruins. And number 72, the nose guard for USC, Monty Doris. Here's the handoff again to the first man. And on the second play of the football game, he, James McAllister picks up about two more yards, moving from the 27 to just beyond the 30. So let's say it'll be third down and seven yards to go. And the man who made that tackle for USC was 72, Monty Doris. Now here comes Monahan into the ball game at the split end position. Okay, when they break the huddle, the line, replacing they Norm the Anderson. They he brings the play okay. with him and Monahan goes wide. Let's see if the UCLA Bruins will put it in the air early. They are set in a wishbone. Mark Harmon is your quarterback. He gives the ball to Johnson over the left side. And Monty Doris, number 72, knocks him down as he picks up one yard. And so the USC defense holds UCLA in the first offensive series. Consistency is the keynote of nose guard Monty Doris for the USC Trojans. And there on a third and obvious passing situation, the Bruins do something that they have done throughout the year, and that is run the football. When they have thrown on third and long yardage, they have liked to get the ball to their split end. But the split end that time was double covered. 
Mike Fryer, number 22, will do the punting. About a 42-yard average for him. He gets it away, hangs it high. It's a very good kick. Then Swan, number 22, the brilliant flanker, has it. And he is knocked down at the 32-yard line. 39 yards on the punt. A return of two yards. And so now we will see the USC Trojans in their first defensive series. And their backfield will consist of number 10, Pat Hayden. Anthony Davis, number 28, at tailback. Manfred Moore, number 44, at fullback. The flanker is Lynn Swan, number 22. John McKay, number 25, comes wide to the left side. The center is Bob McCaffrey. Here's the first offensive play by the Trojans, and they give it to Davis. And Davis is being tackled as he picks up about a yard. Moving very swiftly across to make the stop is Fulton Kuykendall, number 93, and Greg Norfleet, the nose guard for the Bruins. Through the years, this has been the primary play as far as the USC running game goes, the tailback blast. Now, USC is a multiple offense team, but their favorite, favorite formation is the I formation, and they like to get the ball to their tailback. All right, the tailback on this play will be Rod McNeil. He is bigger, and he may be physically stronger than Anthony Davis. His per, yard at car at per average carry is greater. Pat Hayden puts the ball in the air. The pass is caught by number 89, Jim Obradovich, the tight end. Jim Obradovich, who made a brilliant catch to keep the Trojans alive in their ball game against Stanford, a game they eventually went on to win by a score of 27-26. The gain is out to the 40-yard line. It is shy of the first down. So we face now a third down and two for the USC Trojans. John Nanoski was the man who made the stop. Nanoski, the leading pass interceptor in the Bruins secondary. UCLA now with two, four, five men up front on third down and two and the handoff goes to anthony davis the tailbacker as apparently john mckay is going to shuffle his tailbacks today davis running hard off the right side picks up a first down for the trojans out at the 45 yard line and gives some credit to the right side of that usc line anthony davis needs 107 yards to become the second man in usc history to gain over a thousand yards two consecutive years the only other man, of course, O.J. Simpson, 1967 and 1968. First down, Trojans. They get the initial first down of the ball game up at the 45-yard line. Here is the pitch to Davis running wide to the left. He runs through a small hole on the left side. Coming across to knock him down is James Bright, number 38, and Jimmy Allen, number 83. And the defensive right end for UCLA flowed with the play pretty well, too. Rick Baska over there to help out. So the gain is from the 45-yard line to just outside the 48, a pickup of about three yards. It'll be second down and seven. UCLA is essentially a 5-2 team defensively, and in the secondary, they like the zone. Their secondary has intercepted a total of 22 passes. Rod McNeil is back in the tailback. Davis is now bringing a play with him. McNeil goes in motion. Matt Hayden goes back to pass, gets off the snap very quickly. Great protection pass is intended for McKay. He's got it first down. USC at the UCLA 34-yard line. So the Trojans pick up their second first down, and the pass has to be a primary weapon for them. They know that. But this young fellow Hayden has some brilliant receivers in Lynn Swan, one of the great ones that I've ever seen, and John McKay's son, John Jr. <laughs> Brilliant receivers and brilliant protection. You notice that time he set up at 10 yards and nobody got near him. Yeah. We're going, we're going. And one of the worries of the UCLA faithful is that if SC gets out in front, the wishbone is not exactly a catch-up kind of an offense. Here is the handoff and it goes to Manfred Moore, the fullback, and Manny Moore is inside the 30 to the 29-yard line for a pickup of five yards and he's brought down by Fulton Kuykendall, number 93 for UCLA. The Trojans wearing the Cardinal and the Bruins in the blue. The weather is threatening. We have a very low cloud cover after a very bright sunny morning. We have had rain intermittently over the last 10 days hey, here in hey, Southern where, California. Where it's possible we could get some rain before the day is over, but the field is firm. It's in relatively good condition where they're playing now. One of the end zones is going to be a little mushy, but the field is pretty good. Here's the handoff to McNeil, and McNeil the tailback, sliding over the right side on second down and five, reaches the 27-yard line. They've got to go to the 24 to get a first down, and Rick Vasca, number 55, made the stop for the Bruins. Rod McNeil, playing tailback, leaves the ball game now, and Davis comes back. Rod okay, McNeil ready? is the brother First of Fred ready? McNeil, who is a defensive end, starting defensive end, number 92 for UCLA. And before the day is over, the brothers are going to bump heads. 
First quarter of play. USC starting from the 32-yard line and moved for two first downs. It is third down and three from the 27 of UCLA. Hayden up. He hums one to the side. He intended for Lynn Swan, and it is incomplete. He threw a bullet, and he went right through the hands of Swan. He threw a little bit high to handle the ball thrown that hard. Lynn Swan just ran a little hitch pattern, which he went three yards downfield, turned around, and waited for the football. Had he caught that pass, he would have equaled the all-time career receiving record, which is held by Rod Sherman. He needs one more catch to equal and two to break it. Ken Gray comes in at fullback, a little bit stronger and perhaps a little tougher on the pass blocking for the Trojans. Chris Limahalu, who is the much celebrated field goal kicker for the Trojans, not in. This may be beyond his range. On fourth down and three, they're going for it from the UCLA 27-yard line. Here's the pitch to Anthony Davis. He's got the first down. A great individual effort. He was hit hard by Peterson, but he had so much momentum it carried him over the top of Peterson's tackle. And he reaches the 23-yard line for a first down. One of the fundamental plays of the USC attack is that power pitch. That time, Anthony Davis, as you say, making the great individual effort, breaking two tackles to get the first down yardage. Hey, how many up there can smell roses, huh? All right, McNeil is back in a tailback, and Davis leaves. McKay using the tailback as his primary blade, and he's got two great ones, and he's running them in and out, and here goes McNeil on a power sweep to the right side, and he's down to the 15-yard line for a pickup of seven yards. Kent Pierce made the stop. And let me again give you due credit to the people up front. Booker Brown for SC, number 63. Mike Cordell, number 71. Bill Bain, 66. Steve Riley, 78. And the tight end, Jim Obradovich, who threw a whale of a block that time to get him around the corner. All right, Davis is back in at tailback now. Pat Hayden, number 10, is the quarterback. Here's the pitch to Davis. Again, the power sweep. The Bruin pursued a little bit better this time as they penetrate the USC blocking and they get Davis at about the 13-yard line. So it's going to bring up a third down. The tackle was made by Pat Sweetland, number 67 for UCLA. It'll be third down and two. Ball is just inside the 14-yard line. It's a short two yards. The comparison statistically of the team. UCLA has been permissive in their defense in the center of the field, but pretty tough down here. They give it to McNeil. It just depends on how far the momentum carried him. It looks like a first down. It is. He's got it. Once again, the tailback blast play, and through the years, Many tailbacks have run this play successfully. Of course, he's getting a great help from the surge of that offensive line, led by number 63, Booker Brown, who you talked about a moment ago. And John McKay says to leave Booker Brown off the All-American team would be the same as leaving Bill Walton off the All-American basketball team. He's only 263 pounds and quick as a cat. Here's the handoff to Anthony Davis. And Davis is at the 10-yard line before he is ridden back by the UCLA defense. Bill Sandifer, number 66, was involved, but it was Pat Sweetland, number 67, the man who picked him up and rode him back. Anthony Davis now has 17 yards and six carries, and as I mentioned earlier, he needs 107 yards coming into today's game to become the second man in history to go 1,000 yards in two consecutive seasons. It is second down, USC. The ball is squarely on the UCLA 10-yard line. They're playing on grass. Well used, but it's real. Second down and eight from the 10-yard line. Hayden pops one. And he is thrown back as he, I think, reached the four-yard line. That's where they'll mark his progress. And John Nanuski knocked him down for UCLA. So the USC Trojans marching the ball, using all of their weapons in this initial drive in the first quarter. And we have 5.59 to play in period number one as Davis comes back in, replacing McNeil at tailback. And that last catch for Swan was career catch number 91, and that equals the all-time USC record previously held by Rod Sherman. It is third down and two yards to go from the four-yard line. Anthony Davis on a power sweep to the right. Touchdown!
Anthony Davis again on one of his favorite plays, the blast and the power sweep are the fundamental plays of the USC multiple eye formation. Great block, great individual effort by Anthony Davis. Manfred Moore was the man who threw the block. And here's Chris Limahalo in for the extra point try. UCLA jumped off sides. The kick is squarely through the uprights. And so the USC Trojans have gone on the board here in the first quarter of play with 5.39 to play in the first period. By a score of 7 to nothing as they march it down the field. Trojans 7, Bruins nothing. We'll be right back. Linda Hart performs a vitally important job. She's a petroleum engineer for Texaco. She helps to evaluate oil and natural gas reservoirs. This morning, Linda's visiting a drill site. Oil and gas are two of America's principal sources of energy. Energy we need to move our cars and machines to light and heat our homes and run our factories. But the supply of energy is not keeping up with the demand. That's why Linda and all of us at Texaco are doing all we can to get the most out of what we have. And why we're looking for new reserves. It's just one of the ways we're working to help supply America's energy needs. At Texaco, we're working to keep your trust. The Trojans take it 68 yards in 15 plays, and they use up 7.43 on the clock, 5.39 to go. In the first quarter of play, and Anthony Davis is teeing it up, getting ready to kick it off. The UCLA people coming up now for their second offensive series, and Dick Sacco on Traveler waiting for his ride around the old Coliseum. Here come the Trojans now. They'll kick it away, and they were very impressive, Cupper. In their first thing we felt would be important would be the first 10 minutes of this contest. And on that drive, USC did what UCLA likes to do. They kept the ball on the ground and they chewed up some time. Seven minutes and 26 seconds. Davis's kick is high. And it is taken by Kermit Johnson at the two-yard line. Look out! Number 12, Ken Randall, grabs him by the coattail and brings him down as Johnson for a moment almost flashed into the open, and he is terrifying in the open field. Kermit Johnson, a bona fide Heisman candidate, is now the most prolific ground gainer in UCLA history, surpassing the old mark by uh, Kenny Washington. He is the first man to ever rush for 1,000 yards, and he has scored 15 touchdowns, and that breaks the old mark of 14 held by Gary Beaver. 33-yard line, first down, UCLA. Kermit, yeah, James McAllister, the fullback, has the ball, and he explodes out to the 46-yard line for the first down. Brilliant blocking on the left side of the UCLA line, and number 64, Gene Clark, that big 279 guard, blew the hole open for him. Richard Wood getting blown out this time. Number 64, that's Gene Clark, the man who opened the hole for him. First down, UCLA Bruins, and they keep testing the middle of the Trojans as Monty Doris, number 72, gets a piece of the action and the advance of the ball from the 46 into U.S. territory. Well, no, it, they didn't reach Trojan country yet. The ball is exactly on the 50-yard line. A pickup on the play of four yards. It'll be second down and six, and we have 4.49 to play in the first quarter. Pepper Rogers using his wide receivers, Monahan and Anderson, as the messengers. Raymond Burks, the tight end. The handoff goes to McAllister, the fullback, and he is down to the USC 45-yard line for a pickup of five yards on that initial surge, and the Bruins come off the snap most impressively that time. It brings up a third down and one. The tackle by Ray Rodriguez, number 52, a linebacker who is now in the ball game. And with this third and one situation, let's watch again for the surge of that front five of the Bruin line, which averages 260 pounds across the front wall. Eddie Ayers now is in at a halfback position replacing Russell Charles. They go to Kermit Johnson and Kermit Johnson, the brilliant 
Halfback for the Bruins has a first down at the USC 42 yard line. Art Riley and Monty Doris making the tackle for USC. Now Charles number 24 goes back into the UCLA backfield and Ayers comes out. So the, Tro the Trojan touchdown apparently woke up the Bruins. They were held in their first offensive series. They have come back now to move the ball. USC leading seven to nothing. The handoff goes inside again. Both Johnson and McAllister. McAllister pops in there on virtually every play. Johnson sometimes will just coattail him and go right behind him. James Sims, number 41, brought McAllister, the ball carrier, down at the 38-yard line. So call it a pickup of four yards, make it second down and six. Anderson is wide to the right for UCLA. Here comes Mark Harmon keeping the ball, and he turns, goes to the 35, maybe the 34. Nope, they'll mark at the 35-yard line. Blowing across is Art Riley, number 70, to make the stop. Defensive tackle for USC. McAllister and Johnson, of course, are known as the Blair pair because they attended Blair High School in Pasadena. And uh, they have played in the Rose Bowl many times, but they say that they would like to play in the Rose Bowl. All right, Eugene Jones in at tight end. Probably brought a play for Mark Harmon to exercise here on third down and four. And it's a long four. Give it away to that second man, Kermit Johnson, and he's inside the 30. And here you've got another UCLA first down. And let's take another look at it as you see the wishbone operate brilliantly here by UCLA. One of the great plays, of course, in the wishbone attack is the belly series in which the fake will go to the fullback, forcing Woods, the linebacker, to tackle the fullback, and then the slip of the ball to the second back, Kermit Johnson. First down, UCLA, USC, 29-yard line. Trojans lead 7-0. Harmon gives the ball to McAllister. And McAllister is knocked down. He may have penetrated the line of scrimmage. Let's see what. They'll give him a yard, almost two yards on that play. In fact, call it two yards. Bring up second down and eight, the ball at day 27. Kermit Johnson now six carries for, rather McAllister, six carries for 27 yards. Charles Anthony in on that last tackle was a high school teammate of Monty Doris. That must have been a tough team. Woo! Second down, eight yards to go. UCLA at the Trojan 27-yard line. Give the ball again to McAllister. And wedging in behind Clark and Randy Cross and Steve Klosterman. Gets down to about the 24. So UCLA is going to come up now with third and long again. The ball just inside the 24, and it's third down and five. Okay. Big play. And remember that on third and five, the Bruins are not necessarily a passing team, but when they have thrown, they have liked to get the football to their split in, either Steve Monahan or Norm Anderson. Less than a minute to play. 50 seconds to go in the first quarter. Trojans leading 7-0. Bruins threatening. Here's Harmon rolling on the option, keeping the ball. He flips that ball off to Russell Charles, and uh, it's almost a forward lateral. The pursuit is brilliant as Charles Anthony, number 55, was over there, and so was T. Parker, number 14. And Richard Woods, uh, number 83, is the man given credit for the tackle. The loss is back to the 25-yard line, and it is fourth down for the UCLA Bruins at the USC 25-yard line. Efren Herrera, number one, comes onto the field for the UCLA Bruins. And Efren Herrera is a very fine, long-range field goal kicker. He's going to try one from the 32-yard line out of Mark Harmon's hole. It is a 42-yard effort. The kick is up. It's got plenty of distance. It's good. A 42-yard field goal by Efren Herrera. And I mean, he split the uprights perfectly with 41 seconds to play in the first quarter. USC 7, UCLA 3. If your son asks, could you tell him the best way to counter the maximum blitz? Could you tell him the odds of recovering an onside kick? Do you know what constitutes illegal use of hands? 
It's all here in the 1973 NFL playbook. 72 pages fully illustrated on offense, defense, special teams, strategy, and rules. Look for this display at participating restaurants that honor the American Express card. First win all year. Nobody likes a star. You got any shampoo? Head and shoulders, come on. My dandruff isn't that bad. Use it regularly and you keep that dandruff problem under control. What about your hair? It's great for your hair. I use it all the time. Hey, look at the suds. Well, Handball King, what about the head and shoulders? Oh, well, I play like a winner and I look like a winner. <laughs> Go! The UCLA Bruins drive the football. Impressively, but they do not get the touchdown. So with 41 seconds to play in the first quarter, they settle for a 42-yard field goal, and it's USC 7, UCLA 3. The Bruins will kick off to the Trojans. Herrera sails one, a knuckleball. Here comes Davis. And Anthony Davis really started at the 20-yard line. And before the Trojans put it in play, as we near the end of the first quarter, we have some information from our colleague Bill Fleming back in Big Ten country where Ohio State and Michigan play to a 10-10 tie that Dennis Franklin, the Michigan quarterback, broke his collarbone late in that classic ball game. And uh, Woody Hayes, in a comment to Bill Fleming and our producer Chuck Howard, that he felt Michigan probably would get the Big Ten vote to come to the Rose Bowl. We're trying to settle the Western team in the Rose Bowl here in Los Angeles this afternoon. Here comes USC to the attack. And everything goes this afternoon. Every individual obviously keyed to give his absolute ultimate effort in this ball game. And particularly the Trojan tailbacks, Davis 28, McNeil 27, are going to get their shared of time to contribute. And again, thinking back to what we said a while ago, should Michigan get the bid, then you have Harmon versus Michigan in the Rose Bowl should UCLA win the ball game today. It is second down and nine. Trojans from their own 21-yard line. Pat Maiden is back to throw. He goes to the sidelines, and he hits Obradovich. His tight end up on the 34-yard, 35-yard line. First down, Trojans. Go SC. Go and SC. Mr. Hayden is the most impressive Go quarterback. SC. For those of you who have not had a chance to see him previously, he comes off the snap as quickly and delivers the ball as sharply as anybody I've seen all year. First quarter is over. And after one here at the Coliseum, USC 7, UCLA 3. The Goodyear Blimp Columbia with Joel Chamberlain at the controls passing over the Coliseum in Los Angeles as we view it. The site of the 43rd meeting between USC and UCLA and the Trojans have a 7-3 lead and come up with a football on first down and 10 at the 35-yard line as we begin the second quarter of play. Keith Jackson along with Lee Groskup here on ABC and Manfred Moore, the fullback, carries for USC, number 44. He picks up almost three yards on the play before Greg Norfleet, number 63, and Rick Basker, number 55, bring him down for the Bruins. The Trojans are wearing the dark cardinal color and the Bruins are in the light blue. Rod McNeil, number 27, comes into the Trojan huddle. He is a tailback, replacing Anthony Davis and John McKay, using his tailbacks, running them back and forth. It does two things. They bring information, and they also stay fresh. Because the tailback is a primary weapon for the Trojan. Here goes McNeil on a power sweep left. Good pursuit by UCLA. Outstanding defensive play by three Bruins. James Wright, number 38, was over there. Number 90, Peterson was involved in the play, and number 83, Jimmy Allen. James Bright has been a busy guy this year. Number, four, uh, number 38 has made 43 tackles as he comes up from the secondary to cut down number 27, Rod McNeil. He also has five interceptions and 16 assists. It is third down for USC. At their own 37-yard line, third down and eight. Pat Hayden's pass to the sidelines. A leaping catch. Was he in? Yes, he was. The catch is good. And he goes he to it. his yeah. tight end, Jim Obradovich, again. Lynn Swan, number 22, the brilliant wide receiver, and John McKay also getting double coverage today, leaving Obradovich. Here's another look. Let's watch Pat Hayden, who John McKay says can throw the football as well as anyone he's ever seen. Obradovich, the hero of the Stanford game, running the sideline pattern, makes a leaping catch and keeps the feet in bounds. And the advance, of the advance of the ball to the 47-yard line. First down, USC, their own 47. 
We're in the second quarter of play with 13.20 to go, and the Trojans lead 7-3, and Hayden gives the ball to Rod McNeil, the tailback, and great blocking on the right side of the USC line as McNeil comes down to the UCLA 48-yard line before James Bright again makes the stop for the Bruins. Pat Hayden now five of six in the passing department. And what a statement for Coach John McKay to make that this is the best passer he has seen. And a look at the stats of Davis, McNeil, and Carter. Uh, you remember that John McKay went to school with a quarterback by the name of Norm Van Brocklin. Right. Second down. Five yards to go from the 48-yard line. Anthony Davis breaking into the open. Anthony Davis has a USC first down. Alton McSween making the stop number two for UCLA, but a great run, and again, the right side of the USC line did an outstanding job of making him room. Watch it. Once again, the blast play off tackle, which has been the bread and butter play of the Trojans for the last decade. Anthony Davis, the tailback this time. Give Manny Moore credit for a fine block to spring him. The ball is at the 39, UCLA, Trojans first down, Hayden. Turns, gives the ball to Moore, the fullback, spinning up the middle. Plenty of room to run. Goes inside the 30-yard line to the UCLA 29. Before Kent Pierce, yeah, number 23, go, makes the tackle, go, and it's another go, Trojan first down, go, uh, very close go, to it. Go, Manfred Moore, the man who usually does the blocking for the tailback, takes the ball himself that time, and he can run himself. It is not a first down. It's just short as Davis comes back into the tailback position for USC. The Trojans on the march they took it 68 yards for their first touchdown in the first quarter in their first possession of the ball hayden pop pass over the middle obradovich the tight end and it's complete down to the 17 yard line it's another usc first down so again we point out that swan and uh, mckay are getting double coverage Juan McKay getting the double coverage, and also UCLA will be playing exclusively in the zone defense this afternoon. And one of the things you can do well in the zone defense is get the ball to your tight end, who takes an outside release that time, gets up the seam, and Obradovich has now caught four passes. Okay. We're taking it in. We're taking it in. It's first down. USC at the UCLA 18-yard line. More of the fullback. And he drives to about the 16-yard line before the defensive right side, led by Bill Sanderfer for UCLA and Fred McNeil. Bring him down. I'll tell you right now that if USC gets a couple of touchdowns or three touchdowns here in the first half and UCLA doesn't put one on the board, that wishbone offense is going to be in trouble. Also, remember that the Trojans have basically been a fourth-quarter team. UCLA has been a team that likes to get out in front, eat up the, uh, the time, and they have really scored most of their points in the first, second, and third quarters. Of course, one of those reasons, that's a little, little misleading, one of the reasons they've been involved in so many routes that reserves have played the last quarter. The pass for Obradovich is incomplete. He had one hand on it, and James Bright knocked him loose. It'll be third down and nine yards to go for USC at the UCLA 16-yard line. 10.37 to go in the first half. Remember, UCLA was in the 60s and 50s any number of times this season. Davis is out. McNeil comes back in at tailback. And they've got that other fellow we showed you a moment ago, Alan Carter. You probably will see before the day is over. And he's, he's dynamite, too. Big play, third down. Nine yards to go. Hayden's going to put it in the air. He's looking over the middle, looking for Obradovich. Runs out of trouble, throws into the end zone. McKay, touchdown! John McKay. Great individual effort by the quarterback, Pat Hayden, throwing to his favorite receiver and roommate at one point, J.K. McKay. Remember that Pat Hayden lived with J.K. McKay and coach John McKay in his senior year of high school. And this combination was together for three years. They know each other's moves. Hayden doing a great job of scrambling, moving to his left and finding McKay for the touchdown. Rob Adolph to hold as Lima Halu comes in and knocks it straight through the uprights. With 10 minutes and 30 seconds to play in the first half, the USC Trojans have gone to a 14-3 lead. As you watch on ABC, ABC Sports recognized around the world as the leader in sports television. Don Shriver, logging superintendent, warehouser. 
His grandfather was a logger. His father was a logger. And Don has spent almost 30 years in the woods. His whole life is wrapped up in trees. Not just chainsaws and sawdust, but the thriving forest as well. Little trees growing where another crop grew before. Trees in all stages of growth for lumber, plywood, pulp, and paper. For this year, for next year, and every year thereafter. Caring for the woods is really what it's all about. The way Don Shriver figures it, if there weren't green and growing trees, he wouldn't even have a job. And neither would the next generation of Shrivers. Weyerhaeuser, the tree growing company. Anthony Davis will kick it off from the 40 yard line as USC leads 14 to three over the UCLA Bruins. Kermit Johnson is the deep man. Davis knocks it high, knocks it in the direction of Ayers, and Ayers is back at the four-yard line. Soft back there, but he gets, gets it out fairly well. And the Trojans get him at the 15-yard line. Let's take another look at the touchdown play for USC. Another look at Pat Hayden, the great quarterback who's having some kind of day today. Seven of nine in the passing department for 89 yards. And this play goes for a touchdown. He's looking to his right. He scrambles to his left. Momentarily, it looks like he will run. And then he finds his favorite target, J.K. McKay, number 25. We have a change at quarterback now for the UCLA Bruins, John Shara, as we take another look from a different angle. Another look as he's throwing on the move to his left. A perfect strike to J.K. McKay. Shara gives the ball to James McAllister as we pick up the action at the 15-yard line. Call it the 16-yard line. And the gain is up to around the 20 for a pickup of four. For UCLA in the backfield, the quarterback is John Shara, number 15. He is the only quarterback of a major college team in the country that I know who returns punts, an outstanding football player. That's some indication of how much they respect his running ability. It is McAllister, Johnson, and Ayers. Here's the handoff on a pop play over the right side. And Kermit Johnson takes it all the way out to the 31-yard line for a UCLA first down. Kermit Johnson getting a big assist from Steve Klosterman and Al Oliver. And Oliver is a big guy, 6'7", 275 pounds. Shara, by the way, is the leading Bruin passer with 23 completions of 53 attempts. The tackle was made by Charles Phillips, number 49 for USC. First down, Bruins at their own 31-yard line. USC out for the 14-3 lead. Here in the first half of play, Shara on a fake, keeps it, goes off the right side. Monty Doris, 72, is over there with about five of his buddies to help out. Also involved defensively for USC is number 70, Art Riley. One of those buddies was Richard Wood, once again, who at 6'2 and 215 pounds, believe it or not, can run the 40-yard dash in 4.6. Twice All-American. Number 79 up in that defensive line for USC is Gary Jeter, big 250-pound freshman from Cleveland, Ohio. He's going to be around a long time. It is second down and eight yards to go. The ball is up at the 33-yard line. Shara gives the football to Kermit Johnson. Johnson behind the surge of Clark on the right side and the center cross and Klosterman, the guard, moves the football to the, to the 38-yard line. Greg Mandurian. Mardurian making the stop for USC. So it'll be third down and about three yards to go. They've got to go just beyond the 41-yard line for the first down. And a key play for the Bruins. Monahan is the wide receiver. Jara keeping. Gives the ball to Johnson. Kermit Johnson in a foot race. Dragged out of bounds. By number 49, Charles Phillips. So Kermit Johnson explodes around the left side of the line to show you why he is the greatest runner in UCLA history as far as yardage gained. And it's UCLA first down at the USC 23-yard line. Another look at the ideal triple option. Great work by John Shara, who waits to the exact moment to pitch to Kermit Johnson. And this is what the Bruins have done so well and something that the Trojans will want to contain. That Kermit Johnson with those long strides really eats up the real estate. Here's Shara giving the ball to McAllister, the fullback. He explodes up the middle. 
The Bruin offensive front blows a hole for him. He takes it down to the USC 11-yard line before Charles Anthony makes the stop for the Trojans. Another look at the previous play as the triple option by John Shara, the quarterback, fakes to McAllister, on, part one. Waste the pitch to Kermit Johnson. He went out of the stride of Kermit. One other thing that Shara did, Cupper, he tucked that ball under to make it even more pronounced, didn't he? Very, very quick boy. On the 12 yard line, just inside the 12. First down, UCLA. And the handoff is to Choo Choo Schumann, number 36. And it pulled back for the Bruins, and he hammers the way down to the 8 yard line for four yards. Well, they say that uh, Choo Choo Schumann may be the most underrated pullback in the country. And from what we've seen of him this year, Keith, I'd have to agree with that. It was McAllister that carried the ball. Fool me. I can imagine what kind of trouble the linebackers for USC are having trying to find it. <laughs> It's 32 in there at fullback. Remaining there, McAllister has been there all day. Kermit Johnson down to the two-yard line. Again, right behind Klosterman and Oliver. It is not a first down. It is third down and a very short yard. Third down and a very short yard for UCLA at the USC. Two yards. Really line. We have six minutes and 35 seconds to play in the first half. USC leading in the ball game, 14 to three. And the Bruins need a touchdown right here. Russell Charles, 24. Kermit Johnson, 37. James McAllister, 32. John Shara is the quarterback. Shara gives that football to the second man. Johnson. Great ball handling behind the surge of that UCLA front five. John Shara, who is an excellent ball handler, rides the fullback, McAllister, slips the ball to the second back, Johnson, for the touchdown. At 6.21 to go in the first half of play, the UCLA Bruins get their first touchdown of the ball game. Here is Efren Herrera now, out of Mark Harmon's hole, trying to make it a 14-10 game. Couldn't be better. You can feel the emotion here, can't you? Sir. Now let's take a look at some of the ball handling. There's the ride. This is the belly series. Look at McAllister dive, and there's the ball slipped to the second back. Great ball handling and great execution. Nobody uh, touches it. Great block by 88 Eugene Jones, the tight end. 6.21 to go, first half. Score, USC 14. UCLA 10. All right, Herman. You've got some great pros on this New York Life Insurance team. Get out there. And let them protect you. That's my stop. Don't let us down, Herman. Walk out those money problems. I want to go to college. Herman. You can't Security. Where the name of the game is life, there's New York life. Delco Battery. After lots of time and lots of miles, you get to know your car. Delco. You want it to be trouble-free no matter where Delco. you are. That's why you'll find a Delco sign everywhere you go. For easy starts and quality parts, it's the name to know. Well, the more you know. Delco. The more you want Delco. Delco. The more you know. Delco. The more you want Delco. All right, here we go with Efren Herrera to kick it off for UCLA. Those of you who might anticipate ABC's Wide World of Sports, we will not have it for you today, but a Wide World of Sports will return next Saturday afternoon on most of these stations with an outstanding program. Alan Carter and Anthony Davis are the deep men for USC. It goes to Davis up on the seven-yard line. Missed by one, caught by the second, though. And the Bruins come firing down, and we get a penalty flag down. We've got a penalty flag on the field as number 25 came down to make the stop, Greg Williams. So let's see what the penalty call is here. Got a clip called against USC. The clip occurring up around the 16, 17 yard line, so that'll be half the distance. 
And while they pace it off, let's take another look at the touchdown for the Bruins. And as we look at this touchdown from ground level, let's watch the ball handling by quarterback John Shara, who fakes first to his fullback. There's McAllister leaping. He slips the ball to Johnson. And a great surge once again by the Bruin wall. And it's very dark here at the Coliseum in Los Angeles. Threatening rain, but so far we've had, so far we've had none as John McKay faces the sidelines. And here come the Trojans. They have the ball first down at their own eight-yard line. Pat Hayden, number 10, the quarterback. And he gives the ball to Anthony Davis. And Davis is anchored by Fulton Kuykendall. And Greg Norfleet. Norfleet was the man, the nose guard for the Bruins out of the defensive front who anchored his ankles. And he just wrapped him up. They advance the ball, call it the 10-yard line, make it second down and two. As McNeil comes in at tailback, Davis leaves. And now the Bruins are playing their type of game. They ate up yardage and they ate up the clock. They have SC backed up against their own goal line. The Bruins now have five men up front. Playing a 5-2 as Hayden drops back to throw. Gets his pass away to the sidelines. It's complete to his tail. Mac McNeil and McNeil, a 213-pounder, carries the ball beyond the 20 to the 22-yard line for a first down. Kent Pierce made the tackle, and that'll show you some of the tools the Trojans have to work with, and Mr. Hayden has the courage to use them all. Trojans have a diversified passing attack, as you can see that time going to one of his backs, and Pat Hayden with that last touchdown pass to J.K. McKay now equals the all-time season record. That is touchdown pass number 13, and that equals the mark previously held by Jim Jones. All right, Anthony Davis is back in at tailback on first down for the Trojans, their own 22-yard line. Here's the pitch to Davis running to the short side of the field. Great blocking in front. James Bright saves the touchdown at the UCLA 30-yard line. Manfred Moore threw the block that sprung him loose. He goes from his own 22. Let's see if we can see Manfred Moore, number 44, throw the lead block that's going to spring Anthony Davis on the power sweep. There's number 44, Manfred Moore, sticking it to the quarterback. Anthony Davis cuts up field, makes a great individual effort before Bright finally brings him down. 48-yard run by Anthony Davis. First down, Trojans. Bruin 30, it's Rod McNeil carrying the ball on the left side. The same play. And Allen makes the stop and again it is many more throwing the block touchdown. 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 back to the short side of the field away touchdown. from the strength of the I formation touchdown. going to the short side with the power sweep touchdown. alternating their tailbacks touchdown. the ball moved from the 30 to the 20 a pickup of just a little more than 10 yards by Rod McNeil Davis comes back McNeil leaves 5-10 to go first half Trojans leading 14 to 10 trying to get another one they started from their own eight-yard line with this drive, the 48-yard run by Davis, the big play. Give it to Moore, the fullback. Moore is hit as he gets inside the 20 to about the 19-yard line. Pat Sweetland, number 67, the first man to get there, along with Cal Peterson. This program brought to you as a special exclusive of ABC Sports, recognized around the world as the leader in sports television. Let's pause five seconds to allow our local stations to identify themselves. Clock running with 4.25 to play in the first half as Hayden pitches the ball back on second down and nine. To his tailback, and James Bright, number 38, comes whistling out of the secondary, and he really popped Rod McNeil. Give him a yard on the play. It'll bring up third down and eight. ABC's Wide World of Sports being preempted today by the USC-UCLA game, and I don't think you're going to mind okay, that a whole lot, are you? One big touchdown, right? <laughs> one touchdown. I don't think so. Ohio Hit State it. and Michigan play to a 10-10 tie. The Big Ten will vote tomorrow on which representative they will send west for the Rose Bowl game New Year's Day against the winner of this ball game. If we have a tie here, UCLA will go because of the better overall record. Hayden back to pass on third down and eight. Goes deep into the end zone. It is incomplete. It was overthrown, intended for Obradovich, the tight end, and that time he had good, solid coverage from Nanoski. The slot was to the left trying to come back to the short side with his tight end, Obradovich going to the corner, flaring his tailback, McNeil. Good coverage by the Bruins secondary. It brings in Chris Limahalu 
for a field goal try. Imahalu will kick it from the 25-yard line. It's a 35-yard effort. A little guy born in Indonesia hits it. It's He's inside the uprights. It's good. He almost hooked it, but it just hung in there. And so with 3.32 to go in the first half, the Trojans lead the Bruins 17 to 10. Not all radial tires are the same. Some of them have smooth riding polyester cord. Some have double steel belts. Some have a computerized tread to hold in the wet. Some have special cornering grooves. And some have steel stabilizers for handling. But only Goodyear has them all. The Goodyear Custom Steel Guard. The radial tire with all five guards to help protect you five ways. Steel Guard, only from Goodyear. Ryder rents trucks. All kinds of trucks. GMC tractors, trailers, refrigerated trucks, walk-ins, stakes, small Chevy vans. So if you need trucks for a day, a month, a year, over two seconds. Remember, Ryder rents trucks. The NCAA, consisting of over 700 institutions and conferences, speak as one, combining effort to guarantee the best interest of intercollegiate athletics and the individual student-athletes. The NCAA, the athletic voice of the nation's universities and colleges. And we watch Anthony Davis kick off for USC. Kermit Johnson is the deep man with Ayers and Russell back there with him for UCLA. The kick is very short, going to the sidelines, and it is taken way up front by Alton McSween, who is a defensive halfback, and he fights his way back upfield. Look at him strap. I thought he was stopped. I did, too. Ricky Bell finally brought him down. He picked up a good eight yards on second, third, fourth, and fifth effort up to the 42-yard line. One, two, three, four, five. Great effort by you don't You don't think these fellas want this one? Woo! Woo! And as the Bruins start this drive, they have yet to put the football in the air. Well, that's not too surprising. We saw them in Eugene where they went the whole day and threw once. John Charlo remains a quarterback. He took them for the touchdown on his last offensive series. There's your first pass of the ball game. Goes to the sidelines, and it is complete. It is thrown out to Norm Anderson, number 89, and it's enough for a first down. Norm Anderson, number 89, far and away the leading receiver for the Bruins with 15 catches for 243 yards. That's catch number 16 on his favorite route, the sideline. And Shara is right on target. There's the foot that has to be inbounds. He got just a little more than 10 yards out of it. It's first down, UCLA at the USC 48-yard line. The Trojans are leading 17 to 10. We have three, 21 to go in the first half. The backfield consisting of McAllister, Johnson, and Ayers. And it is Johnson. Fumble! Trojans get it! T. Parker recovers it for USC. Johnson hit it for line of scrimmage as he tried to slide wide to the left. Coughed it up, and T. Parker, number 14, covered it for the Trojans at their 38-yard line. T. Parker, the all-time Pac-8 interceptor with a career total of 19. Makes a key fumble recovery for the Trojans. Let's see the ball handling. See where Johnson loses the ball. There it is. There it is right there. Watch for T. Parker. There's T. Our Tebus. All right, Trojans ball as Matt Hayden pitches it back to Anthony Davis. Davis picking his way across the line of scrimmage. Goes from the 38 out to about the 43-yard line. It'll be about a five-yard pickup. And the tackle, number 93, Fulton Kuykendall for the Bruins. That gives Anthony Davis 86 yards rushing for the day. And remember, he needed only 106 coming into today's game to equal 1,000 for the second consecutive season. Second down. Five yards to go for USC. McKay goes wide to the left. Swan flanked to the right. It's the tailback, Rod McNeil. And he is buttoned by Cal Peterson, number 90. Defensive end for UCLA, who slipped the block and got in the backfield in a hurry. The loss is back to the 39-yard line, a loss of four. Cal Peterson, a good one, with 50 tackles and 21 assists. And that's the way to shut off the power sweep. 
Well, those of you who watched that frantic all-out struggle in Ann Arbor, Michigan earlier today, I suspect you're going to see the same kind of thing here before the day is done. 17-10 Trojans lead, have the ball, third down and nine. Hayden's going to put it up. He's going to go to the sidelines. It could be picked off. It is incomplete. James Allen had a chance to pick it off. And had he caught it, he is swift. The pass intended for Obradovich, the tight end. Jim Allen picked off one of those earlier in the year and came back 100 yards with it. Jimmy, oh. Jimmy Allen almost has this. And when you underthrow the sideline pass, okay, look out. That was McKay, the intended receiver. Number 40, James Lucas will do the punting now for USC. John Shara is deep, the quarterback. It's a very wobbly kick, a knuckleball, and Shara calls fair catch and goes out of bounds. Right at the 30-yard line where UCLA will have it. They have one minute and 57 seconds to play in the first half, 31 yards on the punt. USC 710, UCLA 10. We'll be right back. Texaco is pleased to introduce a fantastic new mileage ingredient. You. Yes, you. And the way you drive. I get better mileage. I take it easy. So he beats me by maybe five minutes at best. Five minutes. Just not worth it. I started a carpool. Me, Jack, Shorty, and Charlie there. Four guys, one car. Morning, Charlie. This isn't a speedway. I start slow, I stop easy, and I save an average of two miles a gallon. You know, most people don't have their tires checked as often as they do their oil. Underinflated tires can cost you gasoline mileage. You want to know how I save gasoline? Short trips. We walk. Remember, you're the best mileage ingredient you can put in your car, and you don't cost a penny extra. It's all right. We're back. The scoreboard here at the Coliseum in Los Angeles reflecting the circumstances. The Bruins have the ball at their own 30-yard line, but John Shara, number 15, in at quarterback. Johnson, McAllister, and Ayers are the setbacks. Shara gives the ball away to Ayers, number 31. Reflect Excuse me. Reflecting back on that last drive by USC, it's the first time today the Trojans have had the football that they have failed to make a first down. So perhaps the momentum uh, is switching over at this time to the Bruins. Gain of four yards, second down and six yards to go. A minute and 33 to go in the first half. Shara handling the ball, gives it away to McAllister, and McAllister's out to about the 36-yard line. And here I think somebody ought to spend the time out, UCLA in particular. Ball got loose in the bottom of that stack. The Bruins do have a two-minute or hurry-up offense, but it remains to be seen whether or not they're going to want to use it. They're down by seven at 17-10. Clock running at a minute five to go in the game, in the first half of the game, as Monahan comes out and Anderson goes back in. The football is sitting at the 37-yard line where it is third down and three. Shara. Still got it. Coming around the corner, he's got a first down. He's at midfield. He's at the USC. 46-yard line, first down, UCLA. 44 seconds to play in the first half. James Sims, number 41, linebacker for the Trojans, made the stop. <laughs> Watch this, because number 64, Gene Clark, almost gets a surprise package. As John Sharrock, on the keeper play, looks back to pitch the ball to somebody, and the guy who's there is number 64, Gene Clark. The Bruins spend the timeout. Ball is on the 43-yard line, USC 43, first down. Next Saturday, we've got another doubleheader for you. All of that legend of the Army-Navy game from Philadelphia at 1 p.m. Eastern time, followed by Auburn and Alabama at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Alabama, of course, headed for the Sugar Bowl against mighty Notre Dame. Alabama defeating LSU in their big ball game, the Battle of the Unbeatens down south on Thanksgiving night. You, uh, Notre Dame uh, rolled over the Air Force Academy 48 to 15. The Irish have one game to play against University of Miami at Florida. And the likelihood is that we will have a battle of unbeatens in the Sugar Bowl between Alabama and Notre Dame. And conceivably, 
The winner of that ball game will emerge as the recognized national champion. You'll see that one on New Year's Eve on most of these ABC stations. 46 yard line, they put the ball down. 46 yard line, first down UCLA, Trojan 46. Time, of course, is the ally of the Trojans right now with only 44 seconds remaining in the first half of play. Yeah, we can, we can moan and grow over the major noise. Shara rolls out and he wants to throw the ball. He's under pressure from Bale Mitchell. He gets his pass off down the sidelines and it is intercepted or incomplete. It is intercepted by T. Parker. Fantastic interception. Fantastic interception by Artemis Parker, known as T. Parker, the all-time Pac-8 interceptor, and that is career interception number 20. As T. Parker comes from his safety position, one hands it, Trojans have the football. He looked like Rusty Staub out there, didn't he? Woo! Chara throwing on the move, puts it up. Watch the one-hander. Hey, when this team goes off at half, oh, that's super. The pass intended for Norm Anderson, wide receiver. Now the Trojans, with only 35 seconds remaining on the clock, probably will run it out. With a tailback sweep to the left side, it's Anthony Davis, and he just tucks it in to make sure he has secure control of the football as he's brought down at the nine-yard line. That gets the clock running, and the Trojans are in no hurry. That's what they'll want to do is take a 17-10 halftime lead right into that locker room. And I think you'll see the same play or maybe quarterback Pat Hayden will just fall down or they'll just wait it out and just tell his story in the huddle. That's the way it'll be. At halftime, USC 17, UCLA 10. You're watching another exclusive of ABC Sports, recognized around the world as the leader in sports television. We'll be back after this message from our local station. Betty Davis on Suspense Movie, tonight at 8.30, 7.30 Central Time. The score here at the Coliseum in Los Angeles as you look down from the Goodyear Blimp Columbia, USC Trojans 17, the UCLA Bruins 10 at halftime. The winner of this one to assume the host position in the Rose Bowl as the representative of the Pacific 8 Conference. Earlier today, Michigan and Ohio State played to a 10-10 tie. They will have a vote tomorrow as to which of those teams will represent the Big Ten in the Rose Bowl. If we should have a tie here in Los Angeles, then the UCLA Bruins would get the vote because they would finish the year with the better overall record. But they're down by seven right now in the kind of a contest that we expected. Rough, tough, gambling, everybody giving everything they've got as we look across this massive sports arena at the USC card section. Down on the field, the USC Trojan Marching Band.
Here's the summary of scoring in the first half as Anthony Davis took it in for the USC Trojans and the first score of the ball game culminating a 68-yard 15-play drive to put the Trojans out in front by a score of 7 to nothing. The second element of scoring came from the UCLA Bruins as they took it 6 to 7 yards in 11 plays with Herrera getting a field goal to make it a 7 to 3 ball game and then J.K. McKay, John McKay with a 17-yard touchdown pass from Pat Hayden on a great scramble by Hayden to put the Trojans out in front by a score of 14 to 3. Then Kermit Johnson blew over the left side of the line to take it in from three yards. And uh, Kermit Johnson uh, running off the deft ball handling of the UCLA quarterback John Shara in his first effort. Uh, marched the UCLA Bruins down for the touchdown. And here is the scoring play. And very interesting to watch not only the ball handling of Shara, but the fake of James McAllister. And then as Johnson slashed in over the left side for the Bruins touchdown. And then the USC Trojans came marching back to score on a 92-yard eight-play uh, drive for a field goal to make it a 17-10 halftime score here at the Coliseum. A gentleman who is being featured here at halftime is a man who has given us uh, an enormous amount of entertainment and who is, I'm sure, going to give us much more in the years to come as the USC Trojan Band is saluting, along with the card section, the music of Neil Diamond. The music is the song Dear Father from the motion picture Jonathan Livingston Seagull, which Neil Diamond scored. There he is. The USC Trojan Marching Band directors Dr. Arthur C. Bartner and their salute here at halftime to the world of entertainment, the music of Neil Diamond and his music out of the motion picture Jonathan Livingston Seagull. We're delighted to be here at the Coliseum in Los Angeles for the 43rd meeting between the UCLA Bruins and the USC Trojans. The score at halftime is 17-10. USC has the lead. The University of Southern California, with some 92 buildings on its 150 acres, very close to the Coliseum, it's neither large nor small, built on what is called the human scale. It gives each student a sense of place, a feeling of intimacy with the surroundings, large and varied in its academic program, so the student's mind can claim the kind of adventure that the young people of this era enjoy. These and other remarkable achievements come chiefly from USC's freedom to assess itself, create, move quickly, freedoms that characterize all truly superior, independent, educational institutions and they characterize the University of Southern California. The famous figure of Tommy Trojan and there have been a lot of UCLA Bruins trying to put a little blue and gold paint on that fella over the last few days.
University of Southern California, Trojan Marching Band, performing here at halftime with the USC Trojan football team leading UCLA by a score of 17 to 10. And here are some other scores from around the country for the fine season for Temple. And Joe Paterno's Penn State Nittany Lions winning that traditional back in Pennsylvania, beating Pitt 35 to 13. Maryland with a trouncing up Tulane today. And the Maryland Terrapins have come back to be a very fine football team. North Carolina State, the Wolfpack romping over Wake Forest by a score of 52 to 13. And Duke, Mike McGee's Blue Devils, waking up to beat Duke by a, uh, beat North Carolina by a score of 27-10. That an upset in the Atlantic Coast Conference. And South Carolina defeating Clemson 32 to 20. Ole Miss, oh, there's an upset. Mississippi State, 38-10 over the Ole Miss Rebels. Tennessee, just barely squeaking by. You'll be watching Tennessee against Texas Tech in the Gator Bowl on ABC and most of these stations. Tampa with a 16-15 fourth quarter lead over Vanderbilt. Steve Sloan must be facing the sidelines in that one. Yep, they have pretty girls out here in Southern California. halftime reflected there on the Coliseum scoreboard as the USC Trojans lead by a score of 17 to 10 and we have a special presentation going on here at halftime in recognition of one of the great athletes in UCLA history as Kenny Washington the great late Kenny Washington is being recognized for his contributions not only in the world of athletics in this part of the country but this was a fine man he was a brilliant football star and an all-around athlete at UCLA from 1936 to 1940 he became the first Bruin to receive All-America honors in 1939. He was a member of the National Football Foundation Hall of Fame. And today he will be enshrined in the Memorial Court of Honor at the peristyle end of the Coliseum. His likeness preserved on a bronze plaque inscribed, Kenny Washington, an All-American for America. Participating in the ceremony today, we have Kenny's wife, Mrs. June Washington, his son, Kenny Jr., and his wife and daughter, Karen, accompanied by... The mayor of Los Angeles, Thomas Bradley, UCLA athletic director, J.D. Morgan, Coliseum manager, Jim Hardy, and many others, Mike Frankovich, who was Kenny's longtime friend and freshman coach at UCLA. So there is the plaque that will be placed in perpetuity at the peristyle end of the Coliseum. For the young and old and those who knew him, and loved it. He was quite a fellow. We'll be back here at the Coliseum in Los Angeles with more in just a moment. Announcing Magnavox holiday specials, like this Videomatic 19-inch diagonal portable. Special price. Here's an ideal gift. This six-piece stereo component system with eight-track tape player, priced right at $159.95. You save $40. Or choose from these magnificent Magnavox stereo consoles and save $50. See all the holiday specials at your Magnavox dealer now.
Get together with Holiday Inn. Good food, good friends, together. Back here in the Coliseum in Los Angeles with our halftime score, USC 17, UCLA 10. I want to spend just a moment talking about a couple of exciting series that we have coming up next year, and it's very close next year is, here on ABC. The International Race of Champions, for one, where we take 12 of the finest racing drivers in the world, put them in the same kind of car on the same racetrack at the same time, and just turn them loose. That's going to be exciting. Also, we have the Superstars back for 1974, a series of five programs in which we have four elimination contests involving athletes from all over the world. The athletes, however, not allowed to participate in their own individual specialty. And then we will take the top 12 men from the four elimination contests and match them up in a finale. And a gentleman who won the first Superstars competition seen here on ABC television was Bob Segrin. The young man who set world records in the pole vault was an outstanding athlete here at the University of Southern California. Bobby, you get yourself all honed up for another uh, bank robbery done in Florida? Well, I have to, Keith, and tell you that the competition this time is really severe. And uh, I think the guys realize that they're, in two days you can win a lot of money. You know, one of the things that many of you have suggested is having the opportunity to participate with and compete against athletes from all over the world is a most meaningful personal thing for you. Well, it's exciting because I'm competing against the athletes that I've, I've grown up with or I've read about growing up, and it's exciting to be there uh, rubbing shoulders with them and competing against them uh, for the same ultimate goal. Well, you're not allowed to participate in your specialties, which means you get involved in things like swimming and golf and uh, weightlifting and all of those, those kind of things, but you're so versatile. You've done so confounded many things. It's kind of hard to find something to exclude you from. Well, they're keeping me out of the 100-yard dash. I guess they figure that's the closest thing to pole vaulting, but... Uh... Uh, that's fine with me. I, uh, the other events are, they're interesting, they're fun. I mean, it's a, to be weightlifting against someone like Joe Frazier is really exciting. All right, we have an interesting new thing called the obstacle course that's to be run in this competition. Uh, that's the summary event, the finale. Uh, and many of you, I guess, feel that that's a fair judgment. Well, it involves a lot of different skills, uh, strength as well as agility and, and quickness and coordination. And it kind of combines everything all into one event. Well, we look forward to seeing you again in Rotunda, Florida, and uh, best of luck to you, because this one is going to be worth a lot of money, so we look forward to seeing you again. <laughs> Thank you, Keith. Bob Segrin, who was our first Superstars winner, and who will be back with us again as we begin the Superstars series in 1974 here on ABC. The University of California in Los Angeles, home of the Bruins, is one of the youngest major universities in the nation, opened in 1929. It lies between the Santa Monica Mountains and the Pacific Ocean, 13 schools and colleges, including 65 academic departments, as one of the largest research libraries in the Southwest, with well over three million volumes, many, many special facilities. The Medical Center, widely known for its healing and research, including facilities such as tissue typing laboratories to assist organ transplants around the world. The University of California, Los Angeles, located in the Westwood section of this community. And when you talk about resources at UCLA, if you're sports-minded at all, one of the first things that jumps into your mind is the UCLA Bruin basketball program. And it is conducted by, in my opinion, one of the most brilliant coaches in any sport that I have ever had the pleasure of knowing. And not only that, one of the fine gentlemen in the world, Mr. John Wooden. John, you had your initial workout, formal workout last night, your inner squad the scrimmage, and I watched some of it, and you've just got an awesome bunch of guys over there again this year. With uh, Bill Walton and Keith Wilkes back, we were certain to have a very fine team, but we have a lot of uh, new youngsters I think are going to be exciting and ensure the fact that we're going to have a pretty good basketball team uh, coming up. Two have won 75 consecutive games and two have accumulated the kind of prestige and records that you have. We, of course, at ABC are delighted to have the opportunity to watch and to televise for the nation the December 15th game against North Carolina State. That must be an exciting thing for the future for you. I think that's a tremendous boost for intercollegiate basketball, or I might say uh, basketball in general, because it should be a tremendous game. Two teams that were undefeated last year, and each team uh, uh, kept their two outstanding players, ourselves in uh, Walton and Wilkes, and of course theirs with Thompson and Burleson, and plus some other fine players. Should be a great game and a great boost for basketball. Coach John Wooden, let me, along with millions, wish you the very best, and again, thank you for what you have brought to intercollegiate sport. It's nice to be here, you know that? Yes, it is. May rain a tad before the day is done, though. Very dark day here in Los Angeles. Of course, that keeps our grass green, and here the kick is in the air. It's going to go to the end zone. It's very soggy back there. 
It's taken by Davis. At the goal line, at the 25, at the 26-yard line. Almost away, and who will ever forget the day that Anthony Davis had last year against Notre Dame, particularly on returns. All right, let's set the Trojans for you as they come out for their first offensive series, leading 17 to 10. Manfred Moore, 44, Anthony Davis, 28. There are the setbacks. John McKay, 25, Lynn Swan, 22, Obradovich, 89, is the tight end. The center for the Trojans is Bob McCaffrey, Bill Bain, Mike Cordell, Booker Brown, and Steve Riley. And here's the first play as Swan goes in motion. And number 78 jumps offside, Steve Riley, on the left side of the line. So that ought to cost, cost USC five yards. And it'll make it a first down and 15 if UCLA elects to take it. And they will. Earlier today, as you saw, on most of these ABC stations, Ohio State and Michigan played a 10-10 tie. Woody Hayes in a comment after the game. The Ohio State coach of the opinion Michigan probably will get the vote to come west. But Michigan's quarterback, Dennis Franklin, suffered a broken collarbone or a shoulder separation late in that ball game. So if Michigan comes, they'll be in a little trouble at quarterback. Here's the handoff to Anthony Davis, the tailback. And he blows it straight up from the... 21 yard line to about the original line of scrimmage. Third quarter of play with USC. Second down, 11 yards to go from the 25. This big crowd of more than 90,000 quiet right now, just waiting for the place to start rumbling again, and Hayden goes back to pass on a delay. Gives the ball to Davis, runs out of one tackle, runs across the 30, 30, 4, 5-yard line. A little bit short of the first down. Another great effort by Anthony Davis, who now gets closer and closer to that 1,000-yard mark as Hayden slips him the ball on the delay. Now a third and one situation. Ball is right on the 35-yard line. Third down and a long yard. Bose comes in at a linebacking position for the UCLA Bruins. Rod McNeil, the tailback. Here's the pitch to McNeil. Dives for his first down. And I think he's got it. If they put it down where the linesman marked it, it will be a first down for USC, and it is. Making the stop along with Pat Sweetland. Our friend Jack Crote tells me that Anthony Davis needs three more yards to get his thousand. It is a first down for USC at their own 37-yard line, leading 17 to 10 as we begin play here in the third quarter. And off to Davis. He did not have a good grip on it when he started running, but he was able to clutch it to his bosom, and he blessed his way up to the 40-yard line. Greg Norfleet making the stop. Next Saturday, we've got a, a great special for you at 12 noon Eastern time on most of these ABC stations. It's called the Army-Navy game, the fastest 60 minutes in football, and we take a look at what's been behind the Army-Navy football classic over the years. It'll be followed at 1 Eastern time by the annual battle between the middies and the cadets in Philadelphia. We'll be there. Second down and six of Hayden goes to throw. Then one who can fly and who has room. In the shadow of a blue shirt. For every step here. Working all day long, could not quite reach it. Kent Pierce for the Bruins, running step for step. I know Swan can fly, so obviously so can Kent Pierce. 
Anthony Davis needs one more yard to make 1,000. That would make him the second player in USC history to do that two years in a row. Of course, the only other man, a fellow by the name of O.J. Third down and six yards to go from just outside the 40-yard line. McNeil, the tailback in motion. Hayden's going to put it up. He's got McNeil wide open, but decides to run it. Running for his first down. He's got it. He's at the UCLA 46-yard line. First down, Trojans, and it was Donoski who stopped him. This guy is a good runner. This is something I haven't covered yet, but I want to cover it now. Number 10, Pat Hayden, throwing better than 55%, is also an excellent scrambler, and he will run the football. He did this very effectively in the final drive against Stanford in that great come-from-behind victory. He is a good instinctive runner. 5'11", 177 pounds. He knows how to get the first down yardage. Nanoski has come out of the Bruin defensive secondary, and McSween has replaced him. First down, Trojans, and a handoff to Davis. He's got his thousand and then some as he goes for a first down, running the football from the 46-yard line down to the UCLA 32, a pickup of 14 yards before Pierce can bring him down. And the Trojan offensive line blowing holes now for the Trojan runners. 17 carries, 120 yards, and it puts Anthony Davis over that 1,000-yard mark to become the second man in SC history along with O.J. Simpson. Great effort by Anthony Davis. And he's doing it mostly on two plays, the blast playoff tackle and the power sweep. First down, USC, Bruin, 32-yard line. Goes Davis again. He's at the 29, a pickup of three yards. Norfleet, the tackle for UCLA. Kind of drive the Trojans like, the blast playoff tackle, the power sweep, and percentage passes by quarterback Pat Hayden. Again, we have the change of tailback for USC. Davis out, McNeil in. You really have yourself a football team when you have two guys at tailback, a key position such as tailback out of this eye formation where you can run him back and forth without losing a thing and then know you got another guy on the bench like Carter. Here's Hayden to throw. Chased out of the pocket. Runs away from one. He's down to the 20. He's inside the 20. And it's going to be another USC first down. So Pat Hayden, the first quarterback, down. getting pressure as he sets up the pass twice now, has run for a Trojan first down. Piken ball knocked him out. Pat Hayden, great effort, scrambling to his left. Let's watch him. He sets up quickly. Behind the guard, almost gets caught right here, moves to his left, puts the ball under his left arm, and heads for the sideline. That's a good place, Pat. All you quarterbacks talk like that. <laughs> the ball is squarely on the 20-yard line. UCLA is 20, and the Trojans own the ball as Swan. Number 22 goes wide to the right side. Hayden brings him up. He gives the ball to Davis. Davis is caught. By Pat Sweetland, number 67, but again, Anthony Davis showing great leg drive, twists away and gets yardage out of it. Give him a two-yard gain, call it second down and eight. As we look around this great big old structure. More than 90,000 folks are here. They're making some noise. Come on, give me a hand. Okay, come on. Come on, yeah. The Trojans are leading 17 to 10 and marching. McKay goes wide right this time. Swan comes to the left side. McNeil is back in at tailback. Here's Hayden to throw. Great protection. Great protection. Gets it away. Too low. The pass was intended for Lynn Swan, who had cut across the field on an angle pattern, was heading for the corner, and Hayden could not deliver it to him. Kent Pierce was the man covering. Lynn Swan lining up on the left at the wingback position, runs the crossing pattern, is open momentarily, but the ball is thrown low by quarterback Pat Hayden. Had Swan caught that pass, he would have become the all-time USC reception leader, uh, surpassing the previous mark held by Rod Sherman. At that time, uh, Swan did not pick up any extra bodies in that backfield. It, uh, Bruin just stayed in their standard zone defense and let him come through. Yep. Third down and eight yards to go. For USC, Hayden going to throw. Obradovich going to the corner, throws to the short man, Swan. The ball is loose. Pass was low. Hayden trying to drill it low to Swan. He would have been short of his first down head. He caught it, and it was Alton McSween, number two, covering for the Bruins. So it brings up a fourth down at eight for USC at the UCLA 18-yard line. You can see how dark it is as the clouds have come across the horizon, and we're getting some haze in from the ocean. 
And here's Chris Limahalo from the 25, 35-yard try. It's hooked and wide to the left. And the Bruins hold with 9.53 to play in the third quarter. Bruins get the ball. Score, USC 17, UCLA 10. Now that I'm coaching, you know, I, I tell my players, you know, if you're in a tight ball game and you got a good shot, take it, don't pass off. Now, the same thing holds true when it comes to saving money on long distance. Now, if you dial your own out-of-state calls from your home or office, you got a sure shot and up to 50% savings. So don't pass off to the operator. She can't save you money. To save on long distance, you put them through yourself. Once upon a time, there was the Track 2 and the Schick Super 2. Now, Track 2 got a fast start. But the Schick Super 2 took its time. The Schick Super 2 was also made to fit all twin-bladed razors, but with super chromium edges for super safe shaves. And now that the Schick Super 2 has all that going for it, who would you put your money on? Art the Bruins reaching into every crack and cranny of the Coliseum for enthusiasm for their team as the Bruins come up first down at the 20-yard line. McAllister, Charles, and Johnson are the setbacks behind Mark Harmon, the quarterback, and a handoff to Kermit Johnson. He's across the 25-yard line for a pickup of about six yards. John Shara was the man that ignited the Bruins offensively in the first half, but we start the second half, and Pepper Rogers decides to go with a more experienced man, Harmon. Mark did not throw the football during the time that he was in there, and Shara threw very seldom. One of his two passes was intercepted, that great one by T. Parker. Second down and four yards to go for the Bruins from their own 26-yard line. Harmon gives to McAllister. McAllister penetrating behind Steve Klosterman. Klosterman throwing a cracking block inside and Kermit Johnson also in there to get a piece of the action. The ball is at the 30. It ought to be a first down for the UCLA Bruins it is. James Sims and Richard Wood combining for the tackle. So the Bruins have a first down at their own 30-yard line and Eddie Ayers, number 31, the sophomore, comes into the lineup and Russell Charles comes out, number 24. He is a junior. On first down, Harmon gives the ball to James McAllister, Charles Anthony, number 55, Monty Doris, number 72, are the people who make the tackle for USC. The National Summer Youth Sports Program in its sixth year, providing athletic instruction and personal development to disadvantaged children in 76 cities. Last summer, over 35,000 attended on a daily basis. It's supported by funds from the federal government and by 105 NCAA member institutions contributing facilities and personnel. Second down and eight yards to go as McAllister got two. Second and eight for the Bruins at their own 32. Harmon still got it. Gives the ball away to Charles, number 24. The pitch may have been a little bit late. It didn't give Charles much time to make his pitch and coming across is James Sims, number 41, and Danny Reese, number 46. Seven minutes and 54 seconds to play, and John Shara comes into the lineup for the UCLA Bruins. Here's another look at the play. A better look at some of the faking ability as Gary Jeter goes for the fake to the fullback. And that's part one of the triple option, number 79, Gary Jeter. All right, Shara, number 15, is in there. He's going to put the ball up. His pass thrown. Complete. Nope. Let's see. Is that to stop the clock, or is it an incomplete pass? It is called it's complete. an incomplete complete pass. Give me there waving his arms. I thought maybe he dropped the ball. But it was Norm Anderson, number 89, who made the catch for a first down for the Bruins in the second of the look. Norm Anderson, number 89, who made the only other catch on a sideline route. This time runs a hook and gets the first down yardage. He had 15 receptions coming into today's game. Far and away, the leading receiver for the Bruins. Ball is on the 46-yard line. It's the second man, Kermit Johnson, number 37, from the 46 to the 49 for three. Dale Mitchell, 85. Making the stop for USC. Anderson in, Monahan out. They're the messengers for Pepper Rogers, coach of the Bruins. 
John McKay using his tailbacks. Clock running at 6.50 to go, third quarter. USC leading 17 to 10. It is second down and seven yards to go for UCLA at their own 49. McAllister on a delay. Fumble! USC's got the ball. Turnover number three for the UCLA Bruins. Marty Torres was the man that knocked the ball loose. The nose guard for the Trojans and Art Riley, number 70, covered it. Marty Doris, number 72, who's played consistent football for three years, a former high school teammate of Charles Anthony. Great effort and a big break for the Trojans. Doris, a 6'4", 242-pound senior from Fresno, and I'll tell you, he is like an oak tree in the middle of that Trojan defensive line. So here's USC with a big break. First down at the UCLA 47-yard line to hand off to Anthony Davis. And the youngster slips through there. Good hard running by Davis. Former great at San Fernando High here in Los Angeles. And he takes it inside the 40 to the 39. Mike Martinez making the stop for UCLA. He gained eight yards. Trojans going right back to work with their bread and butter play. The blast off tackled by the tailback. And there it is. Let's take a look at this blast play. Hayden meeting the tailback. Davis with a little bit of depth. This is something that USC has run now for the last decade. Well, they get the, get through that hole so quick, too, he does, that it, it's easy to overrun him. Here's McNeil, the tailback. He's stronger, runs with a little more power than does Davis, perhaps not as quick. And he comes bunging down at the 35-yard line, and that's enough for a first down for the Trojans. Gene Settles made the stop for UCLA, and we go inside six minutes to go in the third quarter. The Trojans yet to commit a turnover, and ironically, through the season, it was uh, the turnover that plagued USC in many of its tough ball games. A little nagging mistakes, but so far they haven't made any play. First down at the 35, and a handoff to Manny Moore. A great blocking fullback. There was, uh, when the season started, he picks up two yards, a tackle by Kukalika for UCLA, but when the season started this year, everybody wondered how much the Trojans were going to miss the blocking of Sam Cunningham and it did take a while to get things sorted out but Manny Moore I think has already shown you today that he can do the job he has indeed leading the way for Anthony Davis who now has 132 yards that's his high game for 1973 his career high 206 1972 Hayden hands the ball to McNeil and McNeil was in the hands of Rick Baska, number 55 but he just bowled over Baska and Kuykendall finally had to come over and make the stop and Memphis State, the Tigers won one today. And, of course, there's the 10-10 tie from earlier in the day, which you saw on most of these stations, Northwestern, Purdue, Indiana. Minnesota won again. Gophers finished strong. <laughs> That's still the most unusual game I think you and I have ever covered, that ball game in Champaign last week. All right, it's third down and three yards to go from the 27-yard line. It goes to Davis. He's got a first down at the 21-yard line. Anthony Davis. Rick Baska made the stop, and USC is chopping up the UCLA defensive front. Oh, look at there. Iowa Ooh. State uh, finishing strong, too. Oklahoma State was the lone remaining game for the Sooners of Oklahoma. But the Cowboys got whacked, getting whacked today. 4.24 to go. Timeout on the field. Score. USC 17, UCLA 10. This early California colonnade was built more than 150 years ago. Yet its beauty is timeless in the way it combines a feeling of spaciousness with strength. This is a new roof found on many GM full-size cars for 1974. And because it, too, combines a sense of spaciousness with strength, we call it a colonnade roof. The colonnade roof has thin yet strong roof pillars that give you more glass area and this kind of visibility. Now, the colonnade's double roof has an acoustical inner panel to help absorb sound. GM's new colonnade roof, strong, more glass area, and the kind of timeless styling you want. It's found on many 1974 Chevrolets, Pontiacs, Oldsmobiles, and Buicks. Because we want you to drive what you like, and like what you drive.
Coliseum in Los Angeles. You're watching on ABC. ABC Sports recognized around the world as the leader in sports television and it's first down, USC, at the UCLA 21-yard line. And the handoff is to the tailback, Rod McNeil. He runs through one tackle at the line of scrimmage. Pat Sweetland had him, couldn't hold him. And he takes it down to the 16-yard line. Brought down by Sweetland and Peterson and Baska. Kansas, David mm. James with an upset of the Missouri Tigers, 14 to 13. The Jayhawks will be in the Liberty Bowl against the North Carolina State Wolfpack, and you'll see that one on most of these ABC stations. Second down and six yards to go, the handoff to Davis. As Davis and McNeil continue to shuttle at tailback, and Anthony gets one yard down to the 15-yard line, and the Bruins a little more determined that time. Norfleet number 63 involved in the play. Speaking of 63, 63 Booker Brown for the Trojans is having some kind of day today, and that's where the Trojans are running with their tailback. What a guy he is. There's a final now, Oklahoma State losing to Iowa State. Booker's out of uh, Santa Barbara. He stands uh, about half a tree high and weighs 263 pounds. Boy, is he quick. It is third down and five yards to go. It's McNeil, the tailback, hit at the line of scrimmage. Norfleet, 63, anchors it. And Dale Curry knifing in to knock McNeil down. So it is fourth down and four yards to go just inside the 15-yard line. And it brings Lima Halu onto the field. Chris Lima Halu, the place kicker for the Trojans, will try a field goal from the 22-yard line. It's a 32-yard effort. Looks good. Is good. So with two minutes and 34 seconds, to play in a ball game, the Trojans go 47 yards and nine plays to get another field goal from Lima Halu, and they lead 20 to 10 over the Bruins. The best minute of the day, the best minute of the day from Polaroid. Polaroid. Square Shooter 2 Land Camera, only $24.95. Is there any other way? Snowstorm. Be ready for it with a winter tire with the exclusive Crosscut Tread. The Goodyear Suburbanite XG Polyglass. Crosscut. To bite and plow through deep snow. Crosscut. To grip and help prevent side slip. Monday through next Saturday, buy any XG Polyglass at the regular price. Get the second tire for half price. Only at Goodyear. Two minutes and 34 seconds to play in the third quarter here in the Coliseum as we wind up a spectacular week of college football on ABC. On Thursday, we saw Notre Dame beat the Air Force 48-15, to 15, the first of five games. Then Thursday night, Alabama defeated LSU to continue undefeated and head into the Sugar Bowl with a chance at the national championship New Year's Eve, which you will see against Notre Dame on ABC. And then yesterday, it was Oklahoma 27 to nothing. Over Nebraska in their traditional, earlier today, Ohio State and Michigan played to a 10-10 tie, and they'll vote tomorrow as to which Big Ten team comes west for the Rose Bowl. And right now, with 2.34 to go in the third quarter, USC is leading UCLA 20 to 10. The winner of this one will go into the Rose Bowl as the host team. And Anthony Davis will kick it off for USC as Lima Halo gives the Trojans a 10-point lead, and here comes Kermit Johnson. Look out, he's got a big hole. Look out, is right. Down UCLA at the 44-yard line. Brought down by Robin Robinson, and he almost broke it. Very deceptive runner. Brings it back 51 yards at long, long stride. He goes a lot faster than you think. Kermit Johnson, who we've talked about so much today, the most prolific runner in UCLA history, the first man over 1,000 yards, the first man to score 15 touchdowns, and he'll hurt you a lot of ways. This time on a return. All right, the quarterback is Mark Harmon. Harmon keeping on the option play, turns it inside and goes to the 40-yard line for a pickup of almost four yards. The Bruins need a touchdown in a hurry here at 2.15 to go in the third quarter. They trail by 10. Danny Reese made the tackle on Harmon. 
Eugene Jones is in there at the tight end position, number 88. Burks comes out. Monahan, number three, goes to wide to the left side as the wide receiver. It's Charles McAllister and Johnson, the setbacks. The handoff is to Charles. Charles loses the football. A penalty flag is down. Trojans have the ball, but wait for the penalty flag. Looks like it's against UCLA. So it's the fourth turnover of the day as the Bruins were offside. Charles coughs it up. Danny Reese recovered it for USC and the Trojans have it. First down. Ball is on the USC 33 yard line. A minute 46 to go in the third quarter and the Trojan 10 point lead looks big. Another look at the fumble. Another look and there's the fumble right there. Turnover number four and another huge break for the USC Trojans. It was Dale Mitchell, number 85, that knocked the ball loose for USC. The Trojans have played errorless football today. The Bruins have turned it over four times. The handoff is to Anthony Davis. And right about the line of scrimmage, the whistle blows the play dead as Davis ran away from three Bruins and was loose on the sidelines of the Trojan crowd hooting and hollering at what they consider a quick whistle. Anthony Davis showing some of that great balance that makes him such an exciting performer. John McKay on the sidelines. It really wasn't that quick a whistle because Davis was pretty well stopped by three Bruins. Left I by agree Greg with Morley. the whistle. Me too. Second down and nine yards to go. The ball is at the 34. We'll we'll Box showing a minute and five to go in the third quarter. Here's Hayden back to throw. Look at that protection. But he runs out of time, and he is wrestled out of bounds by Pat Sweetland, number 67, who's played a fine ball game for the UCLA Bruins, and the loss is back inside the 30-yard line. Let's take a closer look at Pat Hayden as he scrambles to his right, and what's coming up here might be a late shot. <laughs> Let's not say might be. Well, you got 90,000 people all yelling. It's sometimes hard to hear, too. Ball is back on the 25-yard line. They've got to go to the beyond the 43 for a first down, very near the 44. So it's about a 19-yard need for the USC Trojans. And we've got time taken on the field as uh, Pat Hayden goes to the sidelines with 57 seconds to play here in the third quarter program a special exclusive of ABC Sports let's pause five seconds to allow our local stations to identify themselves ABC's wide world of sports will not be seen today because of our coverage of the USC UCLA game great doubleheader Next Saturday, however, we'll be back for the Tournament of Thrills Auto Daredevil Championship out of Tampa, Florida, the World Invitational High Diving Championship from Athens, Greece, and the National Acrobatic Skiing Championship from Sun Valley, Idaho. <laughs> I'll tell you, that's something. We'll be on at a special time, 4.30 Eastern time, between our NCAA football doubleheader on most of these ABC stations. Next Saturday, we feature Army, Navy, and Auburn, Alabama. The Pacific 8 standings, of course, uh, reflect dominance by the Bruins and the Trojans just as you have dominance by Ohio State and Michigan in the Big Ten this past season. The winner of this ball game will assume the host position in the Rose Bowl. Fifty-seven seconds to go now. It's third down and 19 yards to go for the Trojans. They're going to run it. It's Anthony Davis heading for the sidelines and the Bruins give him no room over there at all. Number 93, Fulton Kuykendall was the man that just absolutely would not be taken down. Now the Trojans will have to punt it away in the closing seconds of the third quarter. If Jump. this game, excuse me, if this game ends in a tie, we understand that UCLA will go to the Rose Bowl based on their overall record. Right. John Shara is the deep man and the man doing the punting for USC is number 40 James Lucas that little rush on that one gets it away all right pretty good kick Shara calls fair catch back at the 39 yard line where the Bruins will have it first down with 47 seconds remaining to play in the third quarter 
We're down by 10 points and coming up on the end of the third quarter, UCLA is going to have to put the football in the air. Mark Harmon comes in to quarterback. Either that, if they get lucky and get a quick touchdown. And I guarantee you're going to have to have a little luck the way things are going today. An almost flawless execution. Here's the handoff to Kermit Johnson, number 37. He goes from the 39 up to about the 44, where Monty Doris makes the stop. Well, should they decide to start putting the football in the air, they have liked to get the football first to their split end, either Norm Anderson, number 89, or Steve Monahan, number 3. The second choice would be number 87, Raymond Burks, the tight end. They do not throw much to their backs. Clock is running inside 20 seconds to go in the third quarter. The handoff goes to James McAllister. And McAllister is stopped up around the 48-yard line. He's going to be short of the first down, about a yard shy. And we're going to run out of time in the third quarter. Hey, we're going, man. So we come to the end of the third quarter here at the Coliseum in Los Angeles with USC leading UCLA 20 to 10. We will be back from the Coliseum in Los Angeles after this message and a word from our local station. The mascot of the Trojan, the Trojan horse. And we come up to the first play in the final quarter. Third down and a yard to go and a handoff. There goes to James McAllister and he had a huge hole on the right side. And he bolts all the way down to the 43 yard line for a UCLA first down. So we start the final 15 minutes of play with USC leading by a score of 20 to 10. They have the ball first down at, well, let's call it the USC 42. It's closer to the 42. And the Bruins need to put it in right here to really stay in the ball game. Go this time to Kermit Johnson. Boy, he really took a wallop up at the line from number 83. Richard Wood. He got a lick. 77 yards now for fullback James McAllister. 17 carries. Gain on the play. Let's call it a yard. A uh, yard and a half. Second down and a long eight to go for the Bruins at the Trojan 41-yard line. Anderson wide left. Mark Harmon, the quarterback. He gives the ball. Nope. Keeps it. Throws it. Compact. Just complete at the 31 yard line and is caught by the tight end Eugene Jones and it is it is enough for a first down for the Bruins at the Trojan 31 T Parker made the tackle Burks is back in and Jones out at tight end Monahan in and Anderson out at the wide receiver position Texas Tech winning over Arkansas today and Rice getting win. We'll be seeing Texas Tech against Tennessee in a Gator Bowl on most of these stations. Handoff is to the first man through the line. First man through is James McAllister, number 32. Brought down by Charles Anthony. Gain of two yards on the play. Second down and eight. Scores out of the Western Athletic Conference. Big one between Arizona and Arizona State. The winner of that one will go into the Fiesta Bowl against Pittsburgh. Ball is at the 29-yard line, second down, and eight yards to go. Harmon gives the ball to Johnson. He almost popped out of there. Looks like Woods. It is Richard Woods, number 83, that locked his knees at the 24-yard line. So it brings up a third down play for the UCLA Bruins. They've got to go inside the 21 to get their first down. 101 Sim. yards now for Kermit Johnson. And the Bruins at this point don't have to panic they have plenty of time and this is the type of offense they like triple option oriented third down and four Harmon gives the ball off to his uh, fullback McAllister and McAllister ran right through the pile Ray Rodriguez 52 helped push him down Richard Wood was involved in the play and McAllister got enough for the first down well, that's going to be a key run. drive because the Bruins need seven points as James McAllister, again, on part one of the triple option, follows behind his left guard. That's James, big McAllister. James McAllister's career frustrated by losing a year of eligibility and so forth, and injuries. This, this game is a career for him. Kermit Johnson, number 37, has it. 
as the UCLA Bruins work from the Trojan 18 yard line and Johnson carried it to the 15 for three. Richard Wood again involved on the stop. We have a an official attendance today of 88,037 and the Chevrolet Scholarship Award winners in the Ohio State Michigan game earlier today Archie Griffin of Ohio State and Dave Gallagher defensive player of Michigan will be naming ours a little later and each of the scholarship funds at the respective school will receive a thousand dollars from Chevrolet in the name of the players. Harmon keeping the ball is pulled down and the man who fired through to make the play is Ted Roberson. Number 47 got into the backfield and he messed up the option. So he's down at the 16 yard line and you talk about big third downers. Here's one for you. It's third down and eight from the 16. And again they have liked to get the ball to their split end either on the sideline or the curl in route. But now they line up in a, a double tight end offense. I'm asking for left quiet so he can make himself heard. Trojans have eight men up front. They give it to McAllister. He's down to about the 11 yard line. They went over the right side behind Klosterman and Charles Anthony 55 stepped in there to plug the hole along with Wood and Jeter 79. The ball is put down at the Trojan 11 yard line. It is fourth down and three. The Bruins catching up in that all important stat of time of possession and I have to question that last call on third and obvious passing yardage because the Bruins have not been that bad at putting the ball up. With 10 minutes and 40 seconds to play in a ball game, the Bruins are going for three with Herrera in to try the field goal. He's going to hit it from the 17-yard line out of Harmon's hole. Snap is clean. The kick is in the air. Looks good. It is good. So you've got 10 and a half minutes to play in a ball game. The 43rd meeting as the Bruins go 61 yards in 12 plays and they pull within seven of USC. Trojans 20, Bruins 13. History will record that it appeared late in the year 1973. It came leading the people out of the land of the ordinary car. It came with the eye of an eagle, the heart of a lion, the face of a laguna. And all who came with it were surrounded by things pleasing to the eye, the ear, the touch. The 74 Chevelle Laguna Type S3 by Chevrolet. Come with us. Hi. Want to see something great? Meet the 74 Malibu Classic. It's the really something new Chevelle model by Chevrolet. It looks classic and feels nice. Comfortable and considerate. I think it really looks elegant. But what I really like best about the new Chevelle Malibu Classic is driving it. <laughs> All right, the Bruin folks are kind of happy right now. Their ball club down by only seven points. If UCLA can punch it in, we do come out of this with a tie. The Bruins are going to get that bowl assignment because they will have the better overall record. They came in at nine and one. The Trojans came in at eight, one and one. Herrera will kick it off, and the deep men are Davis and Carter. The kick is in the air. High floater. And it goes to Davis on the one yard line. He is tripped up. And number 34 was the man, Jimmy Jones, who grabbed a foot as Davis went flashing by. And USC has the football first down at their own 25 yard line. And obviously, this is a big drive for the Trojans with 10.26 remaining. They need to reverse the momentum, and they like to do it with the plays that they have been successful with in the past. The blast play, the power sweep, percentage passes by quarterback Pat Hayden. All right, let's see UCLA's defensive alignment. They've got the 5-2 up there as Hayden sets the Trojans and pitches to Davis. And Davis is collared and brought down right about the line of scrimmage by Fred McNeil, number 92. He's the brother of Rod McNeil, the other Trojan tailback, and McNeil coming on the field right now. That last shot was the monster in the monster defense. 
Looked like a five two to me. <laughs> they call it a fifty, but it looks very much like a four three to me. <laughs> All right, the ball is on the twenty five. Second down and ten for USC. You've got Lynn Swan in motion. He's been quiet today. Hayden Thumbo. But he got it back. Yep. Trojans keep it. Never got the ball off the snap. Well, the UCLA defense has the pressure on it right now, and this play helps them. And a big, big third down for quarterback Pat Hayden, as you see recovering this fumble. Now Hayden faces a third and 11, third and 12 situation. He has liked to get the ball to Lynn Swan or J.K. McKay, but in the first half we saw him going more to his tight end, Obradovich. Swan is wide right, McKay left. Here's Hayden back. Tremendous protection. He's got all day to throw. He's going to run the ball. He's not going to get his first down. Bruins hold him. Do you sense that things are turning here? I'll tell you this. USC pass blocking has just been a sight today, admitting, of course, that UCLA is not sending that many people. And I don't think they have a blitz a single time all day. All right, Lucas, back to punt. Shara is deep. Oh, he knocked it a ton. Just knocked it out of sight. Shara goes inside the 20, back of the 18. There's one block. And he brings it back to the 31-yard line. John Shara, we get a penalty call, flipping. We got a clip call against UCLA back at the 23-yard line. I saw it. That's going to hurt. And it's a close call. I'll tell you right now, it's a very close call. As a matter of fact, let's take another look, see if we can pick it out. No doubt about it. Yep, I guess so. 53 yards on the punt. And the clip backs him up. Dale Curry trying to get through to block that man. And the official from the far side of the field was the man who called it. And he called it right from great distance. Now, the ball is back on the 11-yard line, but the field has been moved a little bit for this ball game here at the Coliseum. And the UCLA Bruins are operating on fresh sod, and it is wet back there, and it is very soft, so they do not have good footing. They trail by seven points. And the handoff goes to McAllister. As a result of that field move, we are announcing from the 30-yard line. That's right. <laughs> Eight minutes and five seconds to play in a ball game. McAllister picked up three yards from the outside the 11 to very close to the 15. Charles Anthony on that last tackle. The quarterback is Shara. He gives the ball... No, he keeps the ball. Great move by Shara. Tremendous ball handling, and he's outside the 20. Up to the 23-yard line, first down. And let me say it one more time, that a tie will give UCLA the Rose Ball based on, overall, on their overall record. So now this drive is extremely important. Some of the faking of quarterback John Shara even fools our expert cameraman. Double fake on the belly series. Well, I tell you, he is a clever he ball. He does handler. the job, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. First down. Ball is at the 23 yard line, and the handoff goes inside. Eddie Ayers, number 31, carrying the ball. Advanced one yard from the 23 to the 24, and Gary Jeter stopped him. Seven minutes remaining, and we have seen the Bruins use up this much time on this kind of a drive. And of course, if they were to score with just uh, seconds remaining and then kick the point after touchdown, it would give them the tie and the road goal. Charles going to throw. As a man, he drilled him. Anderson hit hard by Phillips just as the ball arrived, but Anderson held it, and it's first down up at the 36-yard line. Well, this Shara is an exciting football player. Get that ball. Get that ball. Get that ball. Monahan coming wide to the left. 
McAllister, Johnson, and Charles, the setbacks. First down, 36-yard line. Shara back to throw again. Throws to the short man, and the pass is incomplete. The pass was intended for Raymond Burks, number 87. T. Parker was over there defending. There's the time. And time is definitely the ally of the USC Trojans. And that's the first time in the entire ball game that UCLA has chosen to put it up on a first down play. Now they have a second in passing situation. And once again, the tight end and the wide receiver are the primary candidates to get the football. And it's Anderson wide to the left side. Second down and 10 from the 36. Shara keeps it, pitches the ball back. Johnson turns it up to the 39-yard line for three yards. And it's Kevin Bruce, linebacker, and Ted Roberson who combine for the tackle for the Trojans. And now you've got a third down and seven with six minutes to play in the ball game. Let's see with this third and seven if John Shara elects to go once again to his wide receiver, either Monahan or Anderson. And the favorite routes have been the hook and the sideline. He's got some room. He is knocked off his feet at the 46-yard line, very close to the first down. Ray Rodriguez was the man who tried to scythe him, and Shara, thinking all the time, went into the air, knowing he needed so much for the first down, and he may have it. The chains are on the field. Nope, he did not get it. It is fourth down and just oh less than a foot to go. Just oh, stay the in there. And look for him to keep it himself. Five minutes and 25 seconds to play in the game. Let's watch on this third down conversion or near conversion as John Shara leaping comes up a foot short. Fourth down and a foot. Do you risk handling the ball in the backfield or does Shara keep it himself? Keeps it himself. Didn't either. He gave the ball to McAllister, who fumbled it. Well, I guess UCLA recovered it because they're going to bring the chains on again. But he gave the ball to McAllister as he bellied it off to the right side, trying to get it over there behind uh, Steve Klosterman and Al Oliver. I think he's got it this time. But I uh, Let's see. Oh, boy. Oh, it's close. Oh, it's close. It's a first down. I'll tell you, partner, this is almost too much. 5.13 remaining as the Bruins keep their drive alive. And remember, a tie gives them the Rose Bowl. John Shara does not keep it himself, as I predicted. He hands to his full back. <laughs> Call it the 47-yard line. <laughs> Bruins on the ball, first down at their 47-yard line. Monahan is wide right. Give it to Kermit Johnson. Johnson is hit after a yard gain. Charles Anthony, 55, and Riley, 70, the man who made the stop. Ball is on the 48. Burks goes in at tight end. For the Bruins. Second down and nine. They're all big plays for now. 425 to play in a ball game. Trojans lead 20 to 13. Shara gets blindsided. The ball is knocked loose. And ought to be SC's ball. It is. James Sims. He forced the fumble. Dale Mitchell. Came up with it, and there's the biggest play in the football game. No doubt about it. Turnover number five. All right now. What play Mitchell. action pass? Let's see the hit. Oh, it's a sandwich. So Sims blindsides Shara. 
And the Trojans have it with only 4.15 to play in the game, leading by seven points. First down at the UCLA 43, Anthony Davis on a sweep. Manfred Moore with a tremendous block, and Davis goes inside the 40. Manfred Moore, number 44, leading the way. Let's watch the block. Great acceleration by Manfred Moore, leading Anthony Davis. Anthony Davis steering Manfred Moore right into the corner. Makes his cut. Fights ahead for the valuable yardage, and he does not get out of bounds. He eats up the clock with less than four minutes remaining and USC leading. Second down and seven yards to go for the Trojans near the UCLA 39-yard line. The Bruin defense now must meet the test. Hayden gives that ball to McNeil, the tailback, and McNeil is hammered at the 38-yard line by Fulton Kuykendall and others. The clock is running at 3.20 to play in a ball game. The Trojans have the ball. The Bruins have turned it over five times. And Limahalu can reach it from here should the Trojans have to go for the field goal. A field goal would just about put it out of reach, I would think. Swan and McKay both come wide to the right on third down and eight and six yards to go and Hayden on a roll. He's caught in the backfield and cut down by Cal Peterson of UCLA. Well, we may get a chance to see if Lima Halo can reach it from here. I don't think he can, personally, because Boulware is coming on the field, number seven. I would think they'll go for the punt. Try to hit it in the corner. Make UCLA start as far away as possible. We have two minutes to go. Two and a half to play. Boulware, number seven, will do the kicking. Shara is deep for UCLA. Little rifle shot for the corner. Nice good one. So he knocks it out of bounds at the 11 yard line. The Bruins 89 yards away with only 2.13 to play. Not all radial tires are the same. Some have smooth riding polyester cord. Some have steel belts. Some have steel stabilizers for handling. Some have a computerized tread to hold in the wet. Some have special grooves for precise cornering. But only Goodyear has them all. The Goodyear Steel Guard Radial. With these five guards to help protect you five ways. Steel Guard, only from Goodyear. Watch Dick Butkus <coughs> tackle a real shaving problem. I like to shave clothes and still protect my pretty face. So I got the Schick Flexomatic. Watch. Just look at all that beard. The Schick Flexomatic gets closer than any electric I've tried. Dick's right. It feels blade close because the head is super thin and comfortable because it flexes. Yeah, smooth. Even on the neck. Hey, get the Schick Flexomatic. Find out how close an electric can shave. The Goodyear Blimp Columbia with Joel Chamberlain at the controls providing us the sky-high camera this afternoon in our coverage here on ABC of this 43rd meeting between USC and UCLA. Two minutes and 13 seconds to play in the ball game. And what? USC leads 20 to 13. The ball is at the 10-yard line. The 10. So the Bruins are down on the soggy end of the field with 90 yards between them and the Trojan goal line. A tie will send UCLA to the Rose Bowl because of a better overall record. But that is a lot of real estate to make up in two minutes. And I'll tell you this, that Trojan defense has been outstanding, particularly Monte Doris up in the middle, and those linebackers, and everybody along that defensive front, including the secondary, have just played almost errorless football. Shara's going to throw. He whips one. It is incomplete. They had no deep receiver that time at all. Anderson, the wide receiver, had curled back in. Shara tried to get it to him, and so it is second down and 10 from the 10-yard line with 2-10 to play in the game. There is Norm Anderson curling in. Oh, there's some contact out there. Well, this is not only for the Rose Bowl and the Pacific 8 Conference. It is also for the city championship. It's something you have to live with in this great big town for an entire year, and nobody likes it as a loser. Shara dropping back. He's in trouble. Look out. He may get wrapped back there. He gets away from one. Going to throw it away. Throws an interception right into the hands of Pat Roberson. Shara trying to 
get away from a loss deep near the goal line, threw it right into the hands of Roberson, number 47 for USC. The Trojans have the ball, first down. Something we felt right from the beginning is that the Bruins could not get behind with their wishbone offense. Now Shara throwing right along the sidelines, gives it to the wrong colored jersey. Roberson, great play, and turnover number six for the Trojans. And that might put it in the cooler. Mitchell and Riley were the men who were chasing and putting on the pressure for USC. So a tough break for the Bruins as Shara tried to unload it when he should have eaten it. Trojans on the 18-yard line gives to Anthony Davis. And there's a couple of pops for you. Loses a yard back to the 19 with a minute and 52 seconds to play in a game. And now time is called on the field as UCLA has to spend their timeouts to hope they can get their hands on the ball one more time. Hi. Texco asked me to show you some little things you can do to save on fuel oil costs this winter. For example, have your heating system checked once a year. Turn your thermostat down at night when you go to bed. Check the weather stripping leaks and install storm windows if you can. And keep the damper in your fireplace closed when you're not using it. Energy is valuable. Please don't waste it. His face is engraved on the dollar bill and carved into a mountainside. He is an American legend, but he was also a man with human failings, a man a war would push into a personal crisis and who would emerge to become the great leader who would turn the world upside down. Tuesday, November 27th at 8 o'clock Eastern, 7 Central Time on ABC, Texaco presents the American heritage, the world turned upside down, the dramatic story of George Washington. All right, time, time, time. It's so important right now. A minute and 52 seconds to play in a ball game. The Trojans have the ball. Second down, 11 yards to go at the UCLA 19-yard line to hand it off inside to Moore, the fullback, and he gets back to the original line of scrimmage about the 18. And the UCLA Bruins, again, will spend the time out. That leaves them one. Ideally, of course, the Trojans would like to get the first down, but if they miss, a field goal could also wrap it up for them. Colored scoreboard comes right after our football game, and we've had some upsets. We've had plenty of excitement in traditionals around the country today as we bring to an end three days of great college football here on most of these ABC stations. USC, faithful, exuberant right now as their team leads by a score of 20 to 13, and they own the football. Down on the UCLA 18-yard line, third down and 10. College football highlights tomorrow will feature many of the outstanding games around the country. Ohio State, Michigan, this one, Penn State and Pitt, Texas, Texas A&M, Harvard and Yale, Tulane and Maryland, 12 noon Eastern and Pacific time, and 11 Central time over most of these ABC stations. All right. A minute and 47 seconds to play in a ball game. Third down and 10 for the Trojans. Give the ball to Lynn Swan. The flanker coming around, slicing over the left side, and he gets it down to about the 16-yard line. And the clock runs at a minute 35 to play in a ball game. Here comes Lima Halu. Chris Lima Halu, the place kicker for the Trojans, coming onto the field. A field goal will give. The USC Trojans a 10-point lead with only a minute and 15. Clock still running. The snap down. Adolph gets it down. It is blocked. Penalty flags are off. And 92, Fred McNeil was the man who got it. But let's see who's offside. The Bruins. Or were they drawn off? And it's offside call against UCLA. McNeil coming apparently a little bit early. Take a look here. There comes McNeil. McNeil, the man breaking early, no doubt about it. So it is fourth down and four yards to go, and it moves Lima Halu as the Bruins make another mistake. Now he will kick this one from the 18 yard line. It's up. 
It's good. A minute and seven seconds to play in a ball game, and one would suggest here that the USC Trojans, with a 10-point lead, may very well have won their way to Pasadena New Year's Day. 107 to play. The Trojans lead by 10, 23 to 13. Okay. Okay, Harold, you said your goal was financial security. Well, this New York Life team has taken you a long way there. We've blocked out the kind of life insurance program you and your family need. Put in lots of time making sure you'll be protected from financial disaster. You've got some well-trained pros up there, Harold. Hey! Now it's up to you! You've won it, Harold! Hey! Financial security! Where the name of the game is life, there's New York Life. This is Big Beautiful Zenith Solid State Chroma Color 2 built in the zenith tradition of dependability and picture excellence and now it comes in a brilliant new portable small beautiful solid state chroma color too with a new solid state chassis a unique voltage regulator to protect components and an advanced chroma color picture tube you'll enjoy zenith dependability and the best color picture we've ever brought you see the new solid state chroma color two portables from zenith this game like many traditional football games around this country the history marked by miracles, and it's going to take a great big one. I mean, a whopper to pull this one out for the UCLA Bruins. Lee Mahalo will kick it off for USC, and he squibs it on the ground, and it's picked up by McSween, and he brings it back to the 43-yard line where UCLA will have it, and we've got a penalty flag on the field. One minute and two seconds to play in the ball game. Rodriguez made the stop. Let's watch... The referee for Charlie Moffitt, as he indicates face masking, it looks like that's what it was. And so it'll be a major penalty against the Trojans. And it's a penalty that I'm sure uh, John McKay worries about. This is no time to make mistakes. And there is the face mask. I don't know if even Gary Beban can pull this one out for the Bruins. <laughs> I guarantee you. All right, the ball is on the USC 45, just inside the 45, first down. And John Shara is the quarterback for the Bruins. A minute and two seconds to play in the ball game. The Trojans lead by 10, 23 to 13. Shara will throw. Maybe. No, sir. Marty Doris. Marty Doris, the nose guard, just made it. Marty Doris just won the Defensive Player of the Game Award, and USC will get. $1,000 for its general scholarship fund for the play of Doris in this ball game. He has been outstanding. A starter for three years. 35 seconds to play in a game. It's second down and virtually hopeless now for the UCLA Bruins. Ashara goes back to throw again. He's going to throw it as deep as he can. He's throwing for Anderson. Anderson has got it. He's knocked out of bounds at the Trojan 19-yard line for a first down. Danny Reese made the stop. And now we have 24 seconds to play in a ball game. And the offensive player of the game, Anthony Davis, whose credentials were outstanding today. Anthony had 144 yards in 27 carries, and he became the second man in USC history to rush for 1,000 yards two seasons in a row. Of course, the other man to do it was O.J. Simpson in 1967 and 68. Both teams now with one timeout remaining in the game, but... It may or may not mean anything. Only 24 seconds left to play. Here's Shara rolling back. Got to throw it. Got to get it up. Now he starts to run it. Now he's down to the 10. He's down to the 9. And the Bruins will have to spin that timeout right here to stop the clock at first down and goal to go at the USC 9-yard line and 15 seconds to play in the ball game. So while time is out, let us spend a moment right here with Chris Schenker. Lawhorn. Dr. Tom Lawhorn, former linebacker at the University of Georgia and NCAA postgraduate scholarship winner, talks about college athletics. College athletics, as reflected by college football, is more than the tusslings among two dozen boys on Saturday afternoons. It is a pageantry of music and excitement, and fin fair and color. For those fortunate enough to participate, hard work and, and tears and laughter, close friendships and discipline. Yes, college football embodies more than a knowledge of strategy and a mastery of technique. It's getting knocked down, getting right back up. It's third and one in the fourth quarter in a tie ball game, and, and reaching back for that something extra. 
is being tired on that ninth wind sprint and yet straining to win the race. It's making a good play and being helped up by seven teammates. Folks, this is college football. This is college athletics. And these are the sort of things that make boys men and make them better architects, better zoologists, better fathers, better citizens, better people. First down and goal to go. UCLA on the USC nine yard line with only 15 seconds to play in the ball game and SC leading 23 to 13. And Charla is knocked down. Gets the ball away somehow to McAllister. And we get a late penalty flag thrown into it to stop the clocks with six seconds to go in a ball game. The game staff there will bring the team over. Hey, one thing. It was Richard Wood, number 83, on the defensive play. You guys have been great. Yeah. 23-13 USC with only six seconds to play. The Trojans are going to be in the Rose Bowl, and the Big Ten will have a vote tomorrow to determine its conference representative for the New Year's Day game. Let's take another look. This is remarkable, the way John Shara gets the football away under extreme pressure. Look at this. <laughs> That's fantastic. He's quick. The penalty goes against USC. The ball is down on the three-yard line. Shara going to get it up. Time has expired. Pass into the end zone for Burks. It's incomplete. And the USC Trojans have won the ball game, won the Pacific 8 Conference Championship, and won the right to represent the West in the Rose Bowl New Year's Day. And they've won the city championship of Los Angeles. Anthony Davis, the offensive player of the game in our balloting, and USC receives $1,000 for its general scholarship fund, and the defensive player was pick number 72 of the Trojans, Monty Doris. So uh, $1,000 will also go to USC's general scholarship fund in the name of Monty Doris. Ball game is over. Final score, 23-13. The USC Trojans win it just like all the rest of them award once again our final score USC Trojans beat the UCLA Bruins by a score of 23 to 13 Keith Jackson along with Lee Grosscup saying so long from the Coliseum in Los Angeles limp provided by the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company our spotter Dennis Munition our statistician Jack Prote Air travel arranged through, promotion will be paid by United Airlines, chosen for travel by more sports teams than any other airline. The preceding presentation of ABC Sports, recognized around the world as the leader in sports television. We want the team!